Hello, soldiers. <laughs> soldiers. Couldn't even say it with a straight face. You know, as a podcaster, you try to think of a little name for your listeners. I tried to call you soldiers. You're not soldiers. You're couch potatoes. You are uh, miscreants. You're ne'er do wells. You're grifters. You're charlatans. That's what you are. Hello, my charlatans. Little schemers. Um, welcome to the show. I hope your mental health is good. Uh, if not, we'll get into how you can help that later on. But for now, let's just say uh, it's over. Well, first of all, I want to shout out. I got some dates coming up. We got to sell some tickets in Portland, the Helium Comedy Club, February 22nd through 24th, Huntington Beach, the Rec Room, March 1st. But this newly announced Boca Raton, Florida, Misner Park on March 3rd, one night. La Jolla at the Comedy Store, March 8th through the 10th. St. Patrick's Day show, March 16th. Hollywood Improv always sells out. Get your tickets. Then we're going up to Alaska. North Pole, March 20th. Fairbanks, March 21st through the 23rd. Side splitters in Tampa to warm up after Alaska on April 4th through 6th. Tickets at fitzdog.com. Anyway, uh, yeah, the Super Bowl just happened. I'm taping this on Monday, the 12th of February. The Super Bowl was yesterday. It was a fucking snooze fest for the first three quarters. And then I just, someone just told me if he throws off the algorithm if you curse in the first eight minutes on your podcast. And now here I have, I've blown it. I've blown it. I'm going to lose out on my $12. Um, so it picked up in the fourth quarter. Obviously, I'm not going to recount the game. By the time you hear this, it's going to be Wednesday. Um, but my daughter won 200 bucks on one of those, you know, the boxes when you bet on the boxes. Uh, she didn't know. She just handed somebody $10. For a nebulous bet she wasn't aware of, and then they handed her two hundred dollars at the end of the night. So that's pretty sweet. And she celebrated by going on a big shop, and she's making chicken mole for the family tonight with mole that my son mail. No, he didn't mail it. He shipped it back with. There was somebody who visited him down in Mexico. And that person brought the mole back to LA in their suitcase. And then dropped it off at our house. And so we're using that mole sauce and some chicken that she bought and making a chicken mole surprise tonight. It should be very nice. I also won, I won 50 bucks off my Gibbons. I took the Chiefs and I was very happy. Look, here's the thing. Tom Brady must be stopped. His records must be broken. And right now he's got five or six Super Bowls. Well, now Mahomes has three, and he's only 28 years old. So he's on track. He could catch this son of a bitch and take a little wind out of his sails. So we're all hoping for that. Um, Taylor Swift fans, people are complaining. Look, Taylor Swift is good for the NFL. It's more people that are watching, more excitement about the game, and football is not good for Taylor Swift fans. They can't handle it. They are, uh, I was, I watched the game at a friend's house. Just a few of us watched it, but there was uh, a certain person there who was female. And I'm not saying there can't be great. There was one female fan there that knew everything about the game. Dear friend. There was another one who was so focused on Taylor Swift that it was like, come on, there's a whole seat. There's a, there's so much other stuff to be interested in. And, and you know, and then when um, when Travis Kelsey, ban- he bumped into Andy Reid. He was yelling at him, the coach of the Chiefs. He was he yelled at him and he bumped him. Almost knocked him down, actually. And it was like, all right, that shit just <laughs> that happens. It's part of football. Uh, oh, my God. That, he's abusive. Taylor needs to get away from him. He's a- Come on. Come on, this is fu- and then he just he just put his head down and hit somebody. He's like an animal. Yeah, football doesn't need that. But we'll take the eyeballs because the more the more people watch, 
the more revenue there is and the more we can pay these players because they're not they're simply not making enough money right now. I was thinking about like football fans. Will they like will will she gain following from the NFL? And so I did a little research and I said, all right, what are some Taylor Swift lyrics and how will they go over with Johnny Sixpack in Milwaukee, who is snowed in, hates his wife, miserable job. All he has is football on Sunday. And now he sees this. He sees this Taylor Swift and goes, all right, I'll check her out. All right, here's some of the lyrics they might come across. Um, So go on and tell your friends that I'm obsessive and crazy. That's fine. I'll tell mine that you're gay. Whoa. Whoa. We don't. Johnny Sixpack doesn't want somebody spreading that rumor about him because they had a, a, a little bit of a breakup. And first of all, how does how does that sit with the 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 the, the PC fans? I was almost going to say woke, but I hate to throw that word around. Her fans. I mean, I thought they were sensitive to you know making gay people sound like the enemy. I don't know. And then uh, here's another lyric. Uh, well, first of all, all the lyrics seem to be she's always standing in the rain. Uh, she she's. She's driving around. It's always the middle of the night. She's arguing or driving around in the middle of the night. And uh, she slams doors a lot. There's a lot of last kisses. And there's a lot of lights in people's eyes. There's a lot of lights in boys' eyes. One of them is, uh, Corey's eyes are like a jungle. He smiles. It's like the radio. Um, do you want to mix up your metaphors a little bit more? I mean, there's a, here's the thing about Taylor. There are dozens of producers who are, you know, amassing lyrics from dozens of writers and that's what they come up with. They, they come up with, but I miss screaming and fighting and kissing in the rain. That's it. I could have given you that. So anyway, I don't think she's getting a bunch of new fans on that. But um what was it? Wait, there's another one that was funny. Um there, there's a fire inside of you that can't help but shine through. Well, yeah, he's on fire. Uh, there's gonna be some shining. That if somebody if somebody bursts into flame, especially if they're imploding with fire, there's gonna be some shine, right? You know where? Through their eyes. Through the eye sockets, it's gonna be a little bit of it, and that's for you, Taylor. She's five foot eleven. How about that? Anyway, enough, enough, Taylor Swift. I don't need to move on. And then I'm watching the advertising on the Super Bowl, and I swear to God, if you're a celebrity and you were not asked to do a Super Bowl ad, you had to feel a little bit left out because they kind of tapped everybody from pro wrestlers to pop stars, to sitcom stars. Like, everybody had a commercial. And these celebrities, they look like such whores doing these ads. Anyway, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a great product that I have promoted for years on this podcast. And I got to say... Uh, money is where my mouth is. I have spoken to a better help therapist for a long time and I got a lot out of it and she was amazing. And better help is online therapy that is more affordable than in person, more convenient. Do it from your home, sit in your car for God's sakes, sit in uh, a friend's house and let him hear all your dirty secrets. It doesn't matter. You can pick a therapist based on a questionnaire you fill out. And they match you with somebody who's perfect. If you don't like them, you switch it up. No harm, no foul. But right now, if you're, I'm very proud of my marriage. It's something I've worked hard on. Uh, I worked on myself. You can't work on the relationship. You work on yourself and you become a better partner. And, uh, and, uh, and my marriage is something I treasure. I spent the whole weekend with my wife. I don't think we left each other's side for like 72 hours. And I fucking loved it. 
And uh, anyway, you can get to where I am, people. You can be just like me. Um, so do it. Uh, empower yourself. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Um, become your... By the way, this podcast, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I think I'm supposed to say that at the beginning, but I'm saying it now. It is sponsored by BetterHelp. Become your own soulmate. Whether you're looking for one or not, visit BetterHelp.com slash FitzDog today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash FitzDog. Also, support FitzDog Radio comes from Game Time. Oh, Game Time, you got me lined up. I'm looking at Rolling Stones tickets uh, in L.A. They have been coming down, believe it or not, and that's the beauty of Game Time. You can watch tickets go up, they go down. There's last-minute deals. A lot of people freak out because... You know, you think you missed the window, uh, and you think that prices are only going to go up. Not the case. Usher is now $146. It was more than that, uh, I think, before he did the Super Bowl and sweated like like he was having a nervous breakdown. That was weird. Uh, who else? The American Rodeo is coming on the 8th. That's, that's going to cost you $380 to go to the rodeo. F- figure that one out. Trevor Noah, you can go see him for 63 bucks. Anyway, it shows you what's going on in your area, whether you're talking about theater, sports, music, uh, comedy. Uh, go find out what's going on and get yourself a couple of seats. Check out the seats from the app. The app is amazing. A couple of taps, and you can check out what the view is from your actual seat. You can get the get the uh, download the tickets into the app. You don't have to transfer. You don't have to print. You don't have to worry about not finding it. I've used this app many times. It's amazing. And uh, what else? If you lose your job, there's law, job loss protection. How about that? And I get a guarantee on on the price of the ticket. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code FITSDOG for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code F-I-T-Z-D-O-G for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Yeah, baby. Um, My mom, I called my mom today to see how her Super Bowl went. She's a big football fan. And she loved the game. She was very excited about it. She, I think she plays a lot of crossword puzzles while she's watching. So she she didn't know everything. But she told me a funny story about, she's 82 and she's slowing down a bit. She had heart surgery a couple years ago and she's slowed down quite a bit. So she drives and we're not happy about her driving. I think she's at the point where she should be getting driven. And so... You know, she got her. She puts her car seat up, literally the f- most forward click you can move your seat. So she's up against the steering wheel. Um, you can't see her head. If you're driving behind her, it looks like nobody's driving the car. You think it's one of those self-driving cars. And so she gets pulled over by a Florida cop. Watch out. And he noticed that her registration sticker was not on her license plate. So... Long story, but she had been pulled over a while back for the same thing. And sometimes I can't follow the whole story, but apparently she got the sticker, hadn't put it on. There was somebody new at the DMV. She had to get a whole new license plate because her registration had expired. Look, I don't know, but... She had to get a new license plate, and she was so upset because the old license plate had some initials in it that she could remember because they had some significance. And so the new license plate was 32C something, and my mother goes, oh, well, that's fantastic because my bra size is 32C. Vomit. Please don't tell me that, Mom. And so she puts on the new plates and then gets pulled over again, And now this guy says that she has an outstanding ticket because the last time she went in, it was the person's first day, and I guess they forgot to rectify it in the computer. So now she's pulled over. Two other cars, now three cop cars with their lights on, are surrounding my mother, make her get out of the car. They fucking impound the car. And he said, the only reason I'm not arresting you 
is that you just told me you were not aware there was an outstanding ticket. He was going to fucking throw my mom in jail. These Florida fucking cops. Jesus. So anyway, a friend picked her up and she spent the whole week in court, like, I don't know, a couple days at the courthouse straightening it all out. And now she's back driving. So watch out. If you're if you're living in the Jupiter area of Florida, uh, just be aware. Check your mirrors a lot. Pat Fitzsimmons is coming through hard. Um, I'm on Ozempic now. I don't need it, but I don't want to be left out. Like, everybody I talk to is on it. So, no, I'm not on it. But I guess it's hard to get now. I don't need to lose my belly. I've got a belly. I'm at that age. Irish guys, here's what happens to Irish guys. Our hair falls out. We get uh, alligator skin on our necks. And then our legs become toothpick thin. Our bellies jut out. And that's the look. Did I know? Did I mention our ears get bigger? Yeah. Look at my ear. Look at the lobe on this ear. So I'm getting less and less attractive. Thank that. That's why I spend so much energy on my marriage because if it ends, I ain't getting nobody else. This is it. I'm locking and loading. We did so much fun stuff. This we took a took a walk uh, with Annie Letterman and her boyfriend Todd, who I love. We walked all over Venice Beach. I'm always showing her, she calls me her Venice Sherpa because I've been here for so many years and I show her things she didn't know about Venice. And, um, you know, and there's there's a lot of homeless and all that, but who cares? Grow up. Be a, be a fucking man. Tell homeless people, are you scared? I'm not bothering anybody. Um, yeah. And I saw Annie at the comedy store and it's so funny because... We did a we we were hanging out in the green room for a long time because the show was running an hour late. So like all the comics were backed up in the in the great green room waiting to go on. And it's so funny because every time somebody would go on, the remaining comedians would talk about them while they're on stage. Not necessarily shit talking, sometimes shit talking, but mostly just talking about them, you know. And I thought to myself, next time I come in this green room, I'm fucking hiding a tape recorder. I'm gonna leave a bag behind with a tape recorder and find out what. What are the comics really saying about me? Who knows? Speaking of my wife, uh, support for Fitz Dog Radio comes from Joy Mode. I think I speak for most men when I say we want to have better sex. And for the sake of our partner, we may need to have better sex. Uh, These over-the-counter erection pills, that's not what you want. Unregulated chemicals and unsafe doses. Don't, Don't get into that stuff. That's why we partnered with Joy Mode. Uh, look, I took a little Joy Mode. This I'm not gonna lie to you. Joy Mode. Sunday morning before the Super Bowl. Took a little Joy Mode, and let me tell you, threw a move on the wife. Let me tell you something. She was like, "What just happened? That that could be you." Joy. Mo put you in the mode of joy. All these ingredients have been assessed and peer reviewed in journals. You simply mix six to eight ounces in water 45 minutes before sexual activity. And you can fit the packet right in your in your wallet or your purse or whoever you are. Sneak it around with you. It's it's the best. And it's good for uh it, you know, it's not just good for ED, but it also helps you with your blood, your blood vessel support cardiovascular, heart health, athletic performance, blood pressure, all that stuff. So go to usejoymode.com slash Fitzdog and get 20% off with code Fitzdog at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping with code Fitzdog at usejoymode.com slash Fitzdog. Great sex solved naturally. Oh boy, am I setting you guys up. Tickets, erections, um, therapy, all of it. You get it all here. Anyway, you also get interviews. My interview today is with an old dear friend who is a big time writer. She's won a WGA award. She's been no- nominated for Emmys. She was on every year that Kona was on TBS, 11 years she was a writer on that show. Uh, she's performed on that show. She's done stand up on 
Corden on Comedy Central. She was in the final 10 of Last Comic Standing. She's on Marin all the time, Mark Marin's podcast. Uh, she's written a few books that did well. And uh, she's got a new special, which we talked about, called Cis Woke Grief Slut. You can check it out. You should check it out. She's very funny, and I, uh, I'm crazy about her. Here is my good friend, Lori Kilmartin. Welcome to Fitz Dog Radio. I'm your guest, Greg Fitzsimmons. Hey now! Oh boy. Today we got two guests, not just one, both uh, Bay Area comics at one point in their careers, both dear friends of mine, both Irish, and it is Valentine's Day. Ooh. This is airing on Valentine's Day. Okay. Did you guys get me anything? I'm... I haven't gotten anybody anything, but that'll be a different story in guess, four hours. Guess for your, um, I'm I'm getting you ticket sales for your upcoming shows. How about that? <laughs> All right, I'll take it. That's worth something. Thank you, Greg. You so know, if you're hearing this on Valentine's Day in the Los Angeles area, might I suggest you take your be- beloved to Largo to see a live staged reading of the romance classic, I Married a Monster from Outer Space. No. Starring... Among many others, your Maria Bamford, your Bobcat Goldthwait, oh. your your Gary Anthony Williams, your Jonah Ray, your Janet Varney, your Damn. Dana Gould. Whoa! Yeah. And what does a guy like you walk away with in his pocket after a I show like that? Usually, lose a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you owe you owe Flanny a little bit. I a did, little bit. I just did. Uh, hanging with Dr. Z, which is this other dumb thing I do where I dress up like Dr. Z from Planet of the Apes and do him as a lounge performer. I've seen it many times. Very funny. We did a live show at Dynasty Typewriter and we sold it out and we sold about $800 in merch. And after I paid everybody, I was $900 in the hole. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not lying. I remember going to Sketchfest in San Francisco one year, and you came up, and I think you told me you flew yourself up. You bought an entire costume. Rented. Oh, you rented. That's right. You rented yeah. an entire costume. Was to do Mark Twain tonight? Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. <laughs> that's a very funny... That is the origin of the character. Um, was uh, years ago, I'll, I'll be, years ago when I was a writer on the Ben Stiller show, we wrote a sketch... Planet of the Apes, the musical, and it didn't get made, and then it ended up on The Simpsons. But that had nothing to do with what we wrote. That they yeah. came up with that idea, idea on their own, and it was much funnier than mine. Um, but one of the things was then Doctor Zayas performing Mark Twain tonight. And long story short, I ended up doing that live like twenty two years later at Sketchfest because I had access to the actual to the makeup, and I thought it would be fun. To do and it was great. I really enjoyed it and I was, but yeah, it was out of pocket. Yeah, just for the love of the game. And I just wanted to hear. I knew when I walked out, there would be a big laugh, you know, because it's just natural. And then when they realized that it wasn't a mask, that it was the actual, like that I could Make talk and move my yeah. face into it, that there would be another laugh. Right. And I wanted to see if I was correct. Yeah. Yeah, and and I was. But the the weirdest thing about that day was Paul F Tompkins was was there. Yeah. And I and Paul's a friend of mine as he is of all of yours. His father had passed and I had not seen him since his father had passed and he comes up and I'm in Dr. Sayas makeup <laughs> in a Mark Twain suit. <clears throat> Paul, this is not the best time to say this, but I'm so sorry about your father. <laughs> and he burst out laughing. <laughs> Just like, that's actually my favorite moment. Of that I'm life. sure that's the best condolences yeah, he got the whole like, time. Because you, sometimes you, for, you forget. And I do it all the time now because uh, we have a YouTube show and stuff. And like my daughter will come out of her bedroom and I'll like be in the house and like $3,000 yeah. worth of makeup. She's like, oh, n- nothing. <laughs> I want to know if you could drive me to Karina's house, but forget it. <laughs> so let's talk about Valentine's Day for a moment. Um, you uh, do you have a date for Valentine's Day? 
Uh, I'm at Flappers tonight on Valentine's <laughs> Day. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm in love with the comedy club, and his name is Flappers. Oh, guys, I just want you to know I have accepted my uh, position in today's podcast. I yeah. am on with two Irish Boston comics who are longtime friends, and we're gonna step back. Oh no no no! no, no. I'm I'm done talk- no, I, no, I'm done talking. No, talking. No, I've accepted my uh, subordinate position, and I just want to let you know don't feel guilty i would say exactly the opposite yeah. because i am so excited about your new special that Ooh. just came out uh it's <laughs> nice. i know it's got the word woke and slut and grief it's called cis woke grief slut right yes right you didn't go with decimated <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's the sequel <laughs> But humor fist <laughs> humor fist uh what would dane cook call it um crunch gravel yeah <laughs> coffin king <laughs> so um so this you shot and it just it just came out this past month yeah it came out two weeks ago and i shot it in april of last year it was part of the comedy dynamics like multi shoots mm-hmm. at the yeah like, i did one of the, the specials Elfersel. with them oh, so brian volk weiss yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah he's great yeah and they shoot it out everywhere right. so right yeah so i they saw one of the work. clips online I, I think you posted it last week and it was you talking about trans women being important to the women's movement to cis women yeah to cis women yes like they're our greatest allies right yes because uh they are soldiers in the war against the patriarchy fresh soldiers they are excited to be women and you know who isn't excited to be a woman this old cis bitch (laughs) i'm (laughs) done with it so i welcome their enthusiasm their attitude we need it and i think the because they've lived in both worlds, a lot of them know stuff we cis women don't know. Right. Uh, like how much we're supposed to get paid. That's secret <laughs> Good point. info. Good point. They've been, been on the other side. Yes. Right, right. They have intel. And that's why I think a lot of guys don't want trans women in the women's bathroom because they are afraid that trans women are going to show us their old pay stubs. <laughs> Just <laughs> secretly <laughs> beneath. Whip it out. Right. Yes. So, wow, look at the so size of great. it. <laughs> It yeah. writes itself. It does. That's amazing. That's yeah, so that's funny. a great premise. Thank you. Um, so, so stuff like that's all over it. Yeah. But yeah. but if you were, how do you feel about the fact that if you, if if you were, a, if you took the Camille Paglia route, oh, and you I were, said a, it was Paglia. Paglia could be. You're probably right. But if you if you went against trans women, if you were a trans exclusionary radical feminist. <laughs> And you and you ragged on trans women, right? That you would then get canceled. Could you then handle having that much bigger of an audience? <laughs> you know, could you could you handle as a comedian who has been canceled moving to stadiums? Or are you afraid that that crowd would be too big, right? To, to do comedy I like to keep for my them. audience uh, yeah. as yeah. minimal as possible. Yeah, that's, well, I don't that's like... the new promo. <laughs> yeah. This guy was canceled. <laughs> Three yeah. years ago, you he might lost have not everything. seen him. Yeah. And now he has all of everything. Yeah, yeah. Now, yes. I, yeah. now I, I just play craters. Uh, <laughs> I just, like, <laughs> On the moon. Yeah. <laughs> but like, Camille Pagg, isn't she the one like back in the 90s that said yeah. women should take blame for their own rapes more? Which, I don't know that she, she may have gone that far. She, yeah, they, she, yeah. they were she was complicit. like an art historian yeah. right, right. and she loved Madonna and she sort of gave some intellectual heft to Madonna that no one else was doing at the time. So yeah. she was kind of exciting that way. In the same in the same time frame as Naomi Wolf, who since has gone completely yeah. batshit, well, they, right. wrote the beauty myth and kind of was like, hey, think of things differently this way. And so a lot of women my age during that time were like, what the hell? It, it was just a lot of new thinking we hadn't been exposed to in our right. Catholic schools and all well, that she was a, right, right. She was a very well-educated intellectual thinker yeah. who only and ever spoke to non-educated non-intellectuals. <laughs> Interesting. Right, right. Yeah, that, that would be me. And, yeah, most people. Just but, dumbing but it down. Like, just, but, yeah, it but was they dumb never, enough for me to go, that's yeah. never, cool. They, yeah. know, they, don't, they never lift up. Yeah. They right. only drill down. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. But she was like, wasn't she famously uh, like taught by Howard Bloom or some, some, some so, 
some crazy intellectual at the time that I didn't really delve into too much, but I knew certain circles respected. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, Howard Bloom. That was that same time where yeah, those those kind of intellect. That, that's what it was. It Sexual was persona. Intellectuals was the that name could appeal boss. to people that didn't. I mean, Howard Zinn is a is a, actually a better example of that. You know, of taking big ideas yeah. and making them digestible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we all, did we all go to Catholic schools? I didn't go to a Catholic school. I did. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Till what grade? I went just high school. I went, uh -huh. uh, I was normal until after eighth grade. And then I went into a uniform and uh, wow. a girl's school. All girls. All girls. Across the street from an all boys school called De La Salle. They're like a football, national football heavyweight. Nice. Thank <laughs> So yeah, you were right? like Taylor and Thank you found you. your Kel you found your Kelsey over there? Uh I mean, no. But I mean certain girls did. Those yeah. girls that sounds did like exist. the plot of a movie that's eighteen minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> and you only watch the first five. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, there's this website uh, I love movies. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I love movies. And there's this. By website. the way, Katie, you must be excited about the new Kingdom of the Planet of the I'm Apes. Very excited about it. I might, sue, I might be suing them. No, I'm kidding. It's yeah. it's great. But I like as a movie fan, I was on uh, this website last night called Pornhub. I watched <laughs> I watched 23 movies last night. No, yes. In how much time? So 48 minutes. <laughs> It is like, does that count? Did I watch, did you watch a movie last night? Yeah, I watched Dude. 11 movies last night. <laughs> the best is the movie reviewers underneath. The guys that Comments. somehow are not so filled with shame at the end of the experience <laughs> that they want to get on and post about it. That amazes yeah. me. That's just a lot of ice. That's just a lot of isolation. The That's only thing lot, I want yeah. to do at the end of that movie is just apologize to somebody. <laughs> just, yeah. Do I mean? Are you allowed to star movies on Pornhub? Like five? Oh, I don't know. Kind of, no, I, I I doubt it would be a star. I'm okay. sure it would be some kind of an emoji, yeah, of right. some sort. Yeah, some uh, cylindrical emoji. <laughs> this is, some eggplants. There's this one girl who got. Did you know about this girl on the internet? She's probably like 19. The most fresh-faced Iowan. Who uh, she just it's says just make me sad. She just says really sweet things like, you know, I. Uh, you know, I just really want to help people. So I go to Starbucks and I make sure that the creamers are filled. Like something really innocuous. <laughs> and the comments are like, why don't you squat down on yeah. my job? <laughs> and there's yeah. thousands of them. And somehow yeah. they just decided to pile on this poor oh girl. Oh, yeah. hell, is in, hell is in the comments. It, it, I was... You know, Jesus. hanging. <laughs> and I so checked the other day. Some podcast just alerted their <laughs> listeners. Oh my god! Hanging with <laughs> hanging with Doctor Z is a 15 minute weekly YouTube talk show hosted by an orangutan, <laughs> where he interviews. It's it's a goofy talk show sketch. Yeah. sketch we do. This week's episode, I would interview Jason Alexander. No, yeah, wow. no, we have be a graduate. We have, yeah, we have celebrities and stuff. It's 15 minutes. Yeah. And looked at all the comments. One guy goes, this isn't even a parody anymore. It's just become another talk show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in an ape mask. <laughs> I'm in, in $3,000 worth of ape makeup. Dana, do you have stand-ups on your show? Like... We Would you have do, like a five minute? No, we, I mean, if it go, if it ever becomes a real show, which um, I would love, so it won't. Um, <laughs> uh, we might right now it's, it's 15 minutes long. We have a, we have an opening comes out as an opening monologue. Uh, the set looks like the Mike Douglas show from like 1976. Oh, that's I'll, show, awesome. I'll, I'll show it to you after. Um, he, he does a monologue. I have a band leader. Paul Greenberg is a uh, oh band leader. And then I come out, I have a guest. We have, uh, we have commercials for fake products. And then we have a we have a guest, and then we go out. So, wow. and you're doing that every week. We do six to eight episodes a season, and then we. Uh, Why only wow. 15 minutes? You get Jason Alexander, and after 15 minutes, you're um, like, "That's it." What's well, YouTube? And uh, we, I'd rather have people want to see more of it. We just kind of bang, 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 get out. I think yeah. it could be longer, but. Wow. Um, do, you, uh, do it at your house? Like, how do you. What, no, do we rent us. We have a thing like this. No, he needs to spend as much money as possible yeah. on it. Yeah, well, how much does the makeup really cost? $2,500. No, it doesn't. Every, every time, time you do, do an episode, every time I put it on. <laughs> I didn't even offer you guys coffee. Did you. <laughs> just, do, you do you do like all eight in a day? 
No, it usually takes three days. And so do, it's an evergreen on. mono, correct? It's not yes, topical. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. That's it hard, is. Those are actually hard to write. They because... are. Mike Rowe. Uh, we have we have writers. We have you know we Mike have, Rowe. Uh, Mike Rowe helps us. Uh, I want to get all the writers. Uh, Mike Rowe, Blanket Patch, Ken Daly, Aaron Lee, Damn. Uh, Tammy Golden. Whoa. Um, yeah. I uh, only listen for female voice for female yeah, well, you should. Tammy, finally, uh, yes. Yeah, she's Tammy's great. great. I work with Tammy Tammy's twice. Great. Like, this is okay. I'm just going to show you this. You can edit it, I'm assuming. But, like, this is... Uh, and what do these writers get paid? A pittance. Um, I mean, I'm the is only... Is there health insurance? It's nothing. Okay. It's not even... It's not... Uh, we're not like, mints. Doesn't even contribute but, like, points. This is to... a, like, this is... <laughs> All I want is health insurance points. I know. So there we are. Oh, that looks oh, amazing. that's great. Wow. Okay. All right, we're gonna put a clip of that up yeah. on the on the in post. No, you should just show video <laughs> oh, in the yeah. back of his phone. What happened was, <laughs> it was during the I done I done the character, and it was during the pandemic. And Rob Cohen, who uh, directs them, a very good friend of mine, said, uh, "What could we do? Because we were bored, pandemic, that would cost us a fortune, <laughs> but put us at risk of being sued by Disney." <laughs> So it took a while. <laughs> Most things are one or the other. Yeah. 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 So we've fun. all also. This is also a part of my goal. Unlike Lori, who's with her new canceled persona, <laughs> is going to be selling out, you know. She's as, putting as, the kill and yeah. kill Martin. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. As Bill Hicks said uh, about Carrot Top, they're dredging Lake Erie to put in bleacher seats. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get the smallest possible audience I can. I'm, I'm going in the other direction. I'm chasing my audience away with a stick. <laughs> um, so we're all writers. We've all written on TV. We've all been nominated for an Emmy. Mm -hmm. Some of this, won, some of us won an Emmy Who or won? two. Did you? Or three. Oh yeah, of course. Or three. Of course. Four of you counting. Four. Oh four. Four daytime. So that Six. equals those count. a half of those one. Count. No, really. those count. I would take. Yeah. Four Was day times you... over one Emmy nomination. Would you really? Yes. Four day because you just say Emmy. You don't have to say And I've got time. the hardware. Only, right. It's yeah. the same hardware. Only was that from Days of Our Lives? Yeah, I was on Days of Our Lives. <laughs> <laughs> Only Day's the Day. nighttime Emmy people go, that's daytime. Nobody else does. Right. And so that's it true. just makes them look petty. So I would never I've never include that adjective. Well, yeah. I sent one to my mom because I just knew she would be so proud of me, even though writing for Ellen was the most traumatic experience in my life. So I kind of wanted to get rid of one. Right. There was a little less vitriol in my house. Because she was so nice? She would, my mom was. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, have you guys ever worked with Ellen? You must have been uh, San Francisco a stand -up, at yeah. some point, right? Uh, yeah, I've never had a, I've only worked with her in clubs and she was fine. Did you sign an NDA to work with her in <laughs> no, the I club? No, it was a long it time. Sounds ago. like it. No, no, I didn't know. Sounds like you're kind of pussing out on this one. I hear she's the devil in Paul. Oh, there pants. we go. Thank you. What about you? Have you worked with her? Well, you know what? She could make a comeback, and she might need a writer. So <laughs> I, I would, I have not, actually have not worked with her ever. But uh, yeah, so I only go by these two experiences. Do so. you? Were you allowed to look her in the eye? Did you get the no eye contact? No, when I started, it was very much like we sat in her office, which had nice shabby chic couches, and and we that we, was at the beginning of the at show. At the beginning right? was amazing. It was yeah. Karen Kilgariff, Karen Anderson, uh, yep. Danny Incredible. Breen. And we had so much fun. Sure. We just, and, oh, and Andrea, you know Andrea as well. She's from- Levin? Yes. Oh, She's a San Francisco nice. comic. Yeah, I know Andrea That's Levin. a great- yeah. It's a great group. All yeah. Bay Area comics. Did you yeah. date Matt Weinhold? I don't think so. So Andrea, we would sit in her, so. we'd sit in her office and we'd drink coffee and we would, this is when it first started because she had been humbled, you know, she was on the road. Right. She was yeah. not, she had nothing going on in Hollywood. So right. she got this offer to do this show. Well, she'd been homophobia. She'd been homophobia. <laughs> like she had a great yeah. show and then everyone figured it out or she came out and then right. they said no. So, yeah. Yeah. And so. I was on that show. Were you? I was on the sitcom. Oh. Wow. I was Clea Lewis's boyfriend. Huh. There. Oh, Clea Lewis is really funny. Yeah. What did she play on Ellen? Her friend. Okay. So it was fun and we would riff and she was great. And I took the job because I really loved Ellen. Yeah, I yeah. loved her stand up. I went after the job. I put together a writing sample, which I've never done on any writing job I've ever got. It's always mm -hmm. been by virtue of being a stand up. I got just got the job. Wow. This one I went after. Yeah. And then we won. Uh, we won an Emmy and then Everything changed. Really? Yeah. She went Dugan, full Dugan. Who's Dugan? Mike Dugan. God rest his soul. He I was just going to say, just so you, I didn't know if you knew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was a writer on the Dennis Miller show, the yeah. first one that Kevin Rooney was the head writer on. Right. 
And they won an Emmy after they were canceled. And then, like, I bumped into Dugan like 11 years later on an airplane. I was like, Mike Dugan, how are you? Well, you know, after the Emmy, things got really weird and I had to move out. Like, I'm not like have a baby on, I have like a four year old and a two year old. Like, are we really having this conversation? <laughs> The only reason I'm here is I'm just nominated. I actually <laughs> yeah. didn't win. So yeah. Um, but so after the you after your show won an Emmy, everything do you guys know more on the couch? No, no more it was seat? still there, but it was started to get weird with the pushing people away. Okay, pulling them back in, knocking them out of the circle, making them grovel their way back oh. in. It was a lot of psycho drama going yeah. on. Do you, I mean, she must have the amount of death threats, like. Like I, you know, there's no excuse. Just for among being the cruel. writing staff. <laughs> <laughs> coming in, the, coming in with you. She actually got people submitting death packets. <laughs> and then you do the monologue, and then you make a noose. And <laughs> oh my god! But I mean, that's got to alter who you are. That amount of vitriol, right? Coming at you. For- that's got to be so hard. No, look. Yeah. Here's the, I right? say this about any late night host, and you wrote for Conan for. All eight years that he was on TBS. Eleven. Thank you. Was it eleven? Yes. Jesus. Twenty ten to twenty one. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I'm so sorry. That's okay. You were doing blow those for years. Yeah, years. there's a few of those years. I was like, <laughs> you're like, you don't remember those years the way Bowie can't remember 1972. <laughs> 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 so we all know what it's like to work with, you know, you know, uh, a show that is under a lot of pressure to produce yeah. a lot of content. And I give a lot of rope to the people that are in charge of that because they are, not only are they starring in it, overseeing the writing, promote, you're, you're all done. They're getting yeah, on with right, local right. KTLA in, exactly. in Atlanta to yeah, do yeah, interviews yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's nonstop. So and I, constant decision-making. Different right, segment. Right. Everyone's coming to this person, going, asking questions, yeah. and needing a yes or no or whatever. Right. Yeah. And, so and, it's and every day you walk into a building where everyone's goal in that building is to make you happy. It is very hard to not become. To, you have to be so grounded. Yeah. To not let that warp your sense of yes. reality. I would yes. Yes. And it's the people that can keep. You got to keep your originals around you yeah. if you can. Those are the people that stay sane. Like Jimmy Kimmel. He's got his cousin Sal. He's got all these people. Jim and Conan are both the same people they always were. Right. Yeah. Yep. And Conan is, uh, his talk show now is, I almost feel like I've never seen him be himself so much. That is who he is all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, the, when I listen, it's hard to listen because sometimes I just wish the show was like, I I miss him. I miss hanging out, you know? Yeah. But then I'll go on binges, and it it sounds exactly how he was on the monologue meetings, just ball busty, funny, and right. relaxed. You know, right, it's, right? Is it true? I've heard this rumor. I don't know if it's true that Kimmel and Conan don't touch Jay's Tonight Show money. <laughs> <laughs> They're both very principled about that. Nobody. Yes. Yeah. And it's really weird because that money is in a pile in his living room, just a loose pile. And it's so tempting to just touch it, but no one touches it. For people that don't get the joke, Jay Leno. Don't explain it. Say, no, I Make have to. No, it's not part of my job. If you don't. <laughs> People You're famously, like, I did this with a human no, face. Should we put a red rope around this table so only the VIPs get in? Jay Leno famously only uh, used his Tonight Show money and didn't use his stand-up money? Is that what it was? No, no he, he lived he, off he, the stand-up. He, oh. he, he says he, he just, I don't know if he's still the big, he goes, I don't touch my Tonight Show money. Yeah. Like, well, that seems kind of rare. You know, I only buy deodorant online. Okay. You know, all right. You know, it's like, I only buy buy fire trucks with money I got at a corporate date in Hershey, Pennsylvania. (laughs) All right. I I literally was driving through um, Malibu on one of those canyon roads Mm -hmm. and a fucking fire truck came by. And I was like, why is an old 1950s fire truck driving here? Uh -uh. Hey, Greg. It's Jay Leno. Did he recognize you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I know Jay. Oh, my God. Sure. That's so funny. He used to do those remote segments on the show. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Big tuft of white hair and a denim shirt. Oh, yeah. My God. And Hard he, to he's miss. very recognizable. Yeah. He's yeah. all, he's all over what? Burbank. Yeah. I will say this. Like, hey, I will say this about Jay. He loves what he loves unapologetically. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. he, yep. he, God bless him. Yep. 
Uh, I just saw him do like an hour at Flappers. I'm sure it was not fantastic. Not to mention my boyfriend again. Uh, <laughs> about three or four months ago. I'm sure, like it, was, I'm sure it was solid amazing. hour. I'm sure it was like a snare drum tight. Yeah. 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 And killed. Crowd loved him. Yeah. Full house. It's, and he's 71 and had just, uh, you know, was recently back from a terrible burn. So yeah. that guy's that guy's a machine. Still. Yeah, he's a machine. You talking about the burn I gave him about driving through the canyons? <laughs> um, no, the uh, the other thing about him is when he left Flappers that night, yeah, he had a check in his hand. He he does he takes he takes the uh, door. Oh, but he yeah, doesn't okay. touch. But he doesn't touch it. <laughs> but he doesn't touch it. He puts the Flappers money in a little pile and that guards the Tonight yeah. Show money. How many bank have accounts you ever does this a, guy have? Have you ever set up a chessboard? <laughs> <laughs> the flappers' money are like the pawns, and they go on the outside rim of the Tonight Show money. <laughs> oh, I can hear the call now. Yeah, it's listening to Vince's yeah. podcast. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk about. Um, I do these things called fastballs with fits. So why don't we each do it? Okay. And they're questions that every guest get asked. These questions. Okay. And uh, is this a new segment? Yep. Okay. Because I, I listen to you a lot. Like, I'll go in oh, fits you? binges, but I haven't heard this segment. Oh, that's so nice to hear. Oh, oh, I, I, I love catching up with you. You know, here's the thing about you that yeah. I absolutely love is that you're you're a you're a funny Irish Catholic. Can I say broad? Yeah. Okay. Please. You're an Irish cla- Catholic so broad. Straight. You remind me of my dear friend, Mary Fitzgerald, who <gasps> I know you wrote with on Tough Crowd Tough with Crowd. Callie I Quinn. I love Mary. She's so funny. She's one of my dearest friends. Yes. Mary grew up in Dorchester oh, in, a, God bless in her. a very tough neighborhood. Father was in the mob. Sure. In jail most of her life. And she- Her dad knew Whitey Bulger. He Bul- worked Bulger? for Whitey Bulger. Yes. He, was, he was a bookie. Yeah. yeah. Her life is a movie and it needs to be made. She incredible. needs to write it. She's yeah. a writer. There's a boss Somebody you don't want yelling at you. Yeah. What? <laughs> There's a what? There's a boss you don't yelling yeah, at yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> he doesn't touch his murder Talk money about that. <laughs> <laughs> i think you need someone else to write your life when it's like that it would tied to so many historical figures maybe or, you know it, you, yeah. you can't she needs to work with somebody that can that can give it context i think right, right? how can you how can you have that on your own life when are it's... you pitching yourself for a job right now <laughs> yeah mayor <laughs> call me <laughs> Um, so what I like about you is that I am like, uh, sometimes I consider myself like it's contextual. I say jokes that are misogynist or homophobic, but people get it. They get that I'm an old white guy who's fucking around. And it's like, it's ironic. It's ironic. Yeah. Yeah. But you get it. I like that you get it, but you're also one of the strongest, uh, feminist voices in comedy, (laughs) if not the strongest. I don't think I am. No, you are. You're very, I think you're very like. That's also funny. (laughs) <laughs> well, should I lead with that? That you're hilarious, but that you're also so. Um, I like that you get me because sometimes I worry that some people don't. Yeah. Well, a comedian's job is to offend, and if you make people laugh, you're not doing your job. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't play the crater. Yeah, you can't play the crater. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be performing at the Coliseum because I'm gonna. I'm gonna be murdering people live on stage. Do you think like offensive comics get a laugh accidentally and they're like startled by the noise? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what happened? Absolutely. What was that? Was that a yeah, yeah. I was just voicing my thoughts, my inner thoughts. <laughs> but I, I do love it. a comedian's job is to offend. No, no? what? No. It's in the it's in the name. Comedy. It's it's the word. <laughs> they're taking the stand up and walk out part way too seriously. <laughs> You, what you mean to say is you're a comedian, but all you know how to do is offend. That I understand. That you can't do the thing that is in your job description. Have you ever done a bit that you later looked back on and said, "Wow, that was offensive, and I shouldn't have done it"? Oh, oh yes. yes, yeah, <laughs> hours, <laughs> hours. Well, What's one you can think of? I'm not going to tell yeah. you because I'll get murdered. That's the clip I want to use as the promo of the podcast. Is, aren't you relieved that there was a decade where there was no, no one was filming or it was like all VHS mm. tapes that only you have and yeah. you didn't put it out immediately. You know what I mean? Like, I feel yeah. like some younger comics, I, I see some stuff and I'm like, ooh, you, in 10 years, you might not wish this was out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, like open micers selling their album after the set. <laughs> you know, like, like a DVD says, <laughs> it's your fourth set. Yeah, <laughs> I, know. I used to know who people who would sell like uh, cassette recordings. Like they personally recorded 
you know, and made oh duplicates God. off like a cassette recorder and sold them yeah. after the show. Right. Wow. I did a thing once. I had this idea when CDs were the the medium. Yeah. Media. And oh, yeah. I would record my shows. At, this was the idea. Oh, yeah. and, I know and, this idea. And then I, know this I idea. would uh, burn the CDs and mail them to you. So I couldn't figure and out photo, how to... You would take a photo with the person. Yes. And then that would be the photo on the DVD. Yes. Oh, oh the my God. So you need, now you need yeah. a color printer as yeah. well, right? No, no. Well, what yeah. I did was I said, all right, everybody, actually, we're going we're gonna to take the photo and I'm going to record the show. And then I have these little manila envelopes. You're going to give me $20 and then you're going to write your address on it. And then I'm going to mail you the CD with, with our photo burned on it. So, and for some reason, so I did not do this in eight makeup, put, which is I the put, only way to make it more complicated. So I, I, put, the, I put all the envelopes oh in the God. in my suitcase, and then the suitcase got all shifted around. I, oh got no. all, I didn't know which was the Friday Night Late Show, which oh was the no. Saturday Early Show, and I tried to figure it out for weeks, and then... I just walked away. I just threw them all out, and I never was booked back at the Columbus Funny Bone again. <laughs> there were so many complaints. People oh. calling the club going, hey, what the fuck? What is going on? <laughs> Why would he rip us off? Like, like low, that was the plan the whole time. Rent, what a low-rent crime, too. <laughs> you went to such an amazing, you went to oh. such an amazing oh. length to steal twenty dollars from somebody from, from the, the <laughs> top like, club yeah, of one of the biggest yeah, chains yeah. in the country. Right, right. You who booked, just, who booked thirty yeah. other clubs. Like a fake charity and made so much more. <laughs> oh, so that is my life story. As you know from showing up here, where I double booked both of you, and then we scrambled to set up the equipment. <laughs> I'm good at the original idea. The follow through is is I'm, weak. Did it, Mitzi? You do that too, though. Mitzi recorded and then sent people, uh, but I guess he no, had like- No, he burned them at the club and you walked out with the CD. Holy he had like 12 shit. burners backstage. Wow. And then he basically, his line was so long that by the time they would start cranking them out, it only took a minute to burn a right, CD. Right, right, right. So he had it just staff doing that. There was no photos, but I think the photo, a lot of comics also- on the urban circuit, the big thing is to just get a photo mm -hmm. for twenty bucks after the show, and and so I think he did both. He did the wow. CD and the burned photos. Genius. He was a genius. Mm -hmm. He worked his ass off. Yeah. I feel bad about how hard that guy went down. I mean, stealing a joke is I is horrible, but yeah, yeah. I mean, he but he he also stole from a lot of uh, Latino comics that had nothing else going on. Oh, like, is that right? Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, so he took what little like little bread and butter that they had. Oh, I yeah. thought it was just the Bill Cosby joke. I didn't know. No, there was a no, whole no. History he stole from from lesser known Latino comics. Wow. It, it really sucked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, he should be over then. Yeah, I mean, you're... he's not over. Look, the guy probably still goes out and makes ten grand a weekend. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. He's good. Yeah, no one. People don't outside of comedy, and I, sh I have the same opinion as you guys about material as sacrosanct. It's like stealing songs. Like, no, this yeah. is my livelihood. Right. But I remember years ago, years ago, I'm back in my hometown, and I, I bump into like an old English teacher of mine, like at the Shaw's at the grocery store, like Mrs. Starr, how are you? And, and um. She goes, your brother told me you know Robin Williams. <laughs> I go, yeah, I do. I know Robin. <laughs> and, uh, and she goes, I was somebody, I was watching somebody, and uh, somehow it came up that he like stole material or something. And, and she goes, but you know, he does it so, he's so funny yeah. when he does it. Like, yeah. Pe yeah. People don't care. The, yeah. yeah. Don't. I remember when he died, I was literally walking into my booth to do my Sirius XM show. And my producer goes, Robin Williams just died. And the first I walked in and I started the show and I go, Robin Williams just died. I was like, that guy was a thief. <laughs> I, I, it's so weird. That was my first takeaway. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what happened to your Sirius XM show? Yeah. It, went, it was on for 10 years. And yeah. then it, what's great about it is I would have guests like yourselves on. And then afterwards we would do another hour, mm -hmm. which became the podcast. I, uh... So I would never have started a podcast. This is 14 years ago. Yeah. If I hadn't been doing the serious oh, XM wow. show, I was I will, on Howard Stern's channel. I will say oh, yeah, this yeah, about. Yeah. Yeah. I will say I have to say this about Robin though. Robin did steal a shit ton of material uh, when he was in L.A. under a great pressure to produce material and was doing a lot of drugs. Yeah, and he did make a very, very concerted effort 
later in life when he straightened up, moved back to the Bay Area, got clean, married Marsha. Like he really, he would slip, but he would really police himself hard. And I remember once at comedy day, he like came up to me and said, I, somebody told me I'm doing a bit like yours. And it was, this is nonsense. I was like, no, it's fine. It's just that. So, you know, he, he definitely was aware of it, was tempted to do it, but he wasn't amoral about it. Like he, he did have a, he did have a, uh, a, a, he had a sticky memory. A sticky memory. Yeah. And, it, and he would do stuff, but he also wasn't like, yeah, fuck you. Right. Like, he Is, wasn't like that. Do you think that there's, I mean, people. And are, he was, a, he was the, I have to say, sorry, the nicest human being. In the world. No, and his manager yeah. was famous for, if you came to him right about it, he'd write a check, a check yeah. immediately. But a lot of people don't want to check. They want their right, joke. Back. Right. Um, yeah. So but people, I've just seen him do so many incredibly kind things. Yeah. Is there, because uh, I always heard, I only met him one time, but I always heard that like he didn't know he was lifting, like, mm. which would actually be horrifying. I'd right. rather. I think that, well, I think the, that, like it, like he would just overhear things and they go in his brain. And if he didn't know if he wrote it or not, which to me is hell. Right. I, yeah. I, we were doing a show in Mill Valley, an outdoor show at, a, at this part of this comedy thing in Mill Valley. And it was during the day outside in a park in Mill Valley. And it was me, Robin, and Rick Overton. And we're just standing there waiting to go on. And I say to Rick Overton, this is the only time in my life I've, I'm, I'm worried not so much about getting heckled, but being interrupted by a drum circle. <laughs> <laughs> we all laugh. Yeah. Robin goes up and opens with it. Yeah. Oh, that's there's annoying. No, but, but, but there's no way, because he's, he's going to walk off stage and look me right in the eye. I'm his friend. I've had lunch at his house. Yeah. He wasn't aware of it. Yeah. I, 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 I will really? go to my grave knowing he wasn't aware that of it. That literally just, just happened yeah. to me. I won't wow. say the yeah. comic, but we were backstage and it was that, you know that outdoor show? We were just talking about it. That outdoor show yeah, that was Supernova. in Hollywood. Supernova. And so we're sitting there and I don't know if you remember, but did you ever do Supernova? I did. It was uh, like in an alley behind a nightclub during yeah. COVID. So it was outdoors. It was, it was an outdoor show. But in the round. So and it was actually. <laughs> so, so good on every also level. Also known as no, no, Thunderdome. No, no, no. <laughs> Lori, it was unbelievable. Yeah. It was, a, it it was, was actually a really so good show. so great. Yeah. So we're but sitting there. But you could there. never relax. No, you couldn't relax because they were looking at my flat ass. Yeah, no, you're always in the round. <laughs> yeah. You're always. And yeah. so the other crazy thing was there were live crickets that were living in the alley. And so I, I said to the comic backstage, I go, it's so weird because if your joke bombs, like you literally hear crickets. <laughs> and so we're laughing about it. And then she goes on stage and fucking opens with it. I need the uh, name after the show. Okay. Uh, that there's actually, there were crickets living in the Velveeta room as well. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was fun. Uh, there was also, what was the comic book shop that used to do the Nerdist? Uh, Meltdown. Meltdown used yeah. to have a cricket in there as well. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a great idea as a club producer. If I had a club, make them I work. would have a little cricket farm yeah. in the back. <laughs> I would order them wherever you order your crickets. My old roommate, my old roommate used to, Ed Dreskel used to say, you could hear a, you could hear a cricket clearing its throat, but trying to be quiet about it. <laughs> <clears throat> Zach had a, had a joke. Not, my show went so bad there were there was a cricket riding a tumbleweed across the stage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask you guys fastballs with fits. Okay. Um, have you ever? Now I should ask you first because you were a competitive swimmer. Okay. Have you ever saved somebody's life? Oh, uh, my sister. Really? Mm -hmm. We were at a party like a the do you, do you remember grown-ups parties in the 70s naturally a lot of drinking yes tons of drinking and uh my sister there was a we were at a house with a pool and there back then there were no pool safety no one thought thought about it right, right. no one knew anyone drowned i don't i have no idea but they were just like kids were wandering around the pool no yeah, grown-ups yeah, yeah. yeah with um, toasters <laughs> yeah <laughs> meanwhile st this is before the internet before they could get access to the fact that it was the number one killer of children yes, in America. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my sister was being watched by somebody who ended up having mental problems later on, but we didn't know it at the time, was like a, a young teenage woman. And uh, I, I just saw my sister like under. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and yeah. I, I must have been five or six. I don't mm. have many memories of this, but just, I remember going, wow. oh, that's not good. And I went and grabbed her and got her out. Wow. How old was she? 
she must have been one or two. Ah. So I don't know. Like, I maybe if there's videotape, maybe I didn't save her. And I didn't think of it, of it until way, way later. But I yeah. remember just going, I, I need to get Eileen that's the- and uh, from the water. Because like the I girl drown. that was watching her wasn't. And yeah. then I, now I think, my God, if my sister had drowned. My fa- my oh, oh my parents would have destroyed. I mean, yeah, yeah, and that is the, destroyed. Yeah. as a former lifeguard, that is the creepy thing is that when people drown, you don't hear help. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's right, right, silent. yeah, because they're underwater. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah, so, do you ever remind her of that? Does that come up? When- no, but I, you know what, I will. <laughs> Every, I just now that I've just rem- I, yeah. I remember it every so often. Like yeah. I get the chills thinking what what would have happened. Obviously, she wouldn't be there, but just to my parents. I can't think of a more devastating thing to happen to a family. At, the, at your best friend's house? Yeah. Well, because it's avoidable. That's why. The yeah. guilt that you would have. Yeah. Right. It's one thing if your kid gets a disease and dies. Whatever. You shake it off. <laughs> but but when you were responsible. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. And it, it happens so quickly. With drowning, yeah. it can happen even if parents aren't hammered. But they were all hammered back then. Yeah. They always hear things like that's the best way to die. Like it's the like you you like you don't whatever the it's the best way to die. How do you know? Who who reported on that story? <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird I can think of plenty of better ways to die. Yeah. It, it feels like it's like there's hospice nurses that are like secretly watching and not helping as much. They're yeah. just like, yeah. is this does this hurt? Oh, yeah. this that was a bad one. Yeah. Don't do that again. Yeah. yeah. If you had to die, ha- well, you have to die. Yeah. We all have to die. It's uh-huh. on our list. It's the last thing on our list. How would you do it? <laughs> How would you want to die? Not by your own hand, by by the forces of Jesus Christ. Um <clears throat> When you know, Jesus murders you, <laughs> how would you like him to do it? Um, I told I w- I always told my mom that I was my hope for her, my dream was that she die of a heart attack in her sleep in the bed, and that I find her corpse the next morning. Um, so I, I guess I would want that for myself too. Heart attack in during bed. your sleep. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. I was like Norm Macdonald's bit about how his father had a heart attack and. Uh, and he was he was uh, fell out of bed and was laying there, and the paramedics saw him, and they said he's in a better place. He's like, no, I think the the bed like, <laughs> that would be a better place. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever saved a life? Uh, no, but I've had my life saved. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of years ago, was it a DJ? <laughs> For the first time, <laughs> was there was that a near murder on the dance floor? I was, uh, <laughs> I was, I can't top that. This is a better story now. Uh, no, Bobcat Goldthwait and I were being driven to a gig. It was a very close. It was like three blocks away. We were doing a show together, and uh, I went to get into the front seat of the car, and the drivers had a little bulldog sitting in the front seat. And uh, and I saw the dog and I went, oh, I'll just sit in the back. And and they went, no, no, no. I said, no, it's fine. I, I'll just, just, I don't care. I'll sit in the back. So I sit in the back and uh, we got T-boned by a guy going about 55 miles an hour. Mm. And had I sat in that front seat, I would have, if not have been killed, I would, I would be completely, my bones would have just been powdered. Whoa. And uh, as it is, we got hurt. Uh, God. Broke a rib. Bob got a concussion, broke a couple of ribs. Um, and, uh, and the dog was fine. Cause the dog just got, it was a bulldog just got thrown out of the floor of the car. It actually um, looked better uh, after. Yeah, it was <laughs> actually, it actually pushed his face out and we found out that it was a dopamine picture. He could, pin- he could read, yeah, breathe easier. It was a dopamine picture. His nose elongated. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I absolutely would have been, uh, yeah, so severely what? messed up. Who books that? I can, t- I can hook you up. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. Do you see, so it was after the show or before the show? B- before the show. So there was no show. No, not only was there no show, the people who came to the car were the people in line to see the show because they were, it was right, we were <gasps> pulling into the club and there was a line and I, I thought I was going to be dead for a couple of minutes because I couldn't breathe. Yeah. And I just thought, I didn't have a very high-minded thoughts yeah. in my last, what I thought was my last moments. I literally thought, I had the cognitive thought, I'm going to die looking at the roof of a car. <laughs> that was, and then, 
my lung re-expanded. Wow. And, uh, but some, some poor fan witnessed that. Yeah. <laughs> not looking my best. So you yeah. were trying to breathe and you you're, you you felt like your lungs had just shut down. Yeah, I had the wind knocked out of me. I mean, it's, that's not Gosh. unusual because we, because we were only going three blocks, we're in the back seat, not seat belted in, mm. and we broke our ribs on each other. Wow. As Bob says, it sounds like a superhero <laughs> origin story of the, of the, the comedian been... that was on The Simpsons and in Police Academy. Oh, that's um, great. Had, but, uh, had you been wearing seatbelts, would you have had, had less injuries? Oh, vastly less Jeez. injuries. Probably none at all. Wow. Jeez. But Should the, we call but the front seat was, Yeah, he's here. He's in town. All right, let's call him. Or as I call him, because I'm a personal friend, Robert Cat. (laughs) Robert Cat. (laughs) (laughs) But we went, he had a concussion, and then we had to go to the hotel, and we couldn't fly back, so we were just kind of like had a dead day in uh, Atlanta. Uh, We were filming a documentary, like it was a whole baloney thing. Uh, Yeah, I can call him right now. Um, Why are we calling him, just so I know? I don't know. Just right. to verify the Just story. Verify the Sounds story. Sounds a little too good to be true. Okay, but if I call him, how do we hear him? I you're gonna hold it up, put it on speaker, and then put it up to your microphone. Okay. Um, I just love that the crowd saw it, so it's not like. Oh, these fucking guys. They probably partied too hard last <laughs> night. It's like, no, we just saw them get T-boned. We just T-boned. rescued them. <laughs> yeah. Tell us one bit. <laughs> Voicemail. Voicemail. All right. Smart Wait, guy. I, I did a. Hey, how, by the way, he's in my. <laughs> He's in my phone as Robert Goldthwaite. <laughs> like, so if anybody steals my phone, they'll never think that Bobcat Goldthwaite is Robert Goldthwaite. There's no way. Do you do that with any celebrity names in your phone? Yeah, I do. Sometimes. Rename them? Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 You do? Yeah. Who did you rename? Uh, like, I think uh, uh, Conan is uh, uh, Theodore Roosevelt. Yeah, yeah. Because he loves yeah, Theodore Roosevelt. Like, yeah. I have like A. Jolie, B. Pitt, just like people I call a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> The J man. Yeah. Jesus. Tay Tay. <laughs> um, all right. So that was a good round mm-hmm. of fastballs with Fitz. Wasn't that fast? No. Which is really the key to the game. I don't want it to be fast. How great of a of a prefix is Fitz for pretty much anything that you want to do? You know it's, what I mean? I think it's actually the, the downfall of this podcast because Fitz Dog is so not really me I know. It, it was it was kind of a thing in college i hated frat guys so sure, much yeah, was, and I, I once tried ironic, to fight a yeah. whole frat so my friends started calling me fitz dog just to just to tease me and then it just kind of stuck and everybody started calling me fitz dog and now you talk about brand i don't know anything about branding but this is not branding yeah yeah yeah. you know i when i i swam for ucla for a little bit and yeah. they started calling me killer because my last right. name is yeah. Joe martin but i was like always in getting fourth place it's like guys please i'm not a killer please this is embarrassing that's yeah. that's a it's a name katie ledecky should have and nobody yeah. else yeah. yeah more like yeah, more like wake swallower <laughs> oh all right there's no need to get yeah. cruel <laughs> fitz dog jeez <laughs> Hey, Lord, did you get kicked in the head again on that race? <laughs> <laughs> Booey kill Martin. Uh, what have you turned down recently? Turned down? I'll start with the straight white man because I know it's less likely he's actually turned anything down. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm trying to think of what I've turned down. <laughs> Nothing. I'm desperate for work. <laughs> Okay. Sometimes I get offered. I get offered a show. I get offered to run an, an animated show. Yeah. that I turned down because I just didn't think. I watched it. I was like, Yeah, I I don't know how they think this is good. Yeah, I don't want to live in this world. Right. As if you if you know what they thought was funny, you could help them get there. Yeah. But when it's so nebulous. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's good. What about you? Oh, this is much more. Uh, a uh, working class comic. I got offered a week at a club um, that's kind of a little flaky, right? Yeah. Historically. And I was like, that's a lot of money for them. They don't yeah. usually do that. And plus hotel. 
And that was it, right? No air. No, yeah. a little bit for air. Yeah. Not enough for air. Yeah. No one's given enough for air, by the way. Right, yeah. They oh, have not, not anymore. been yeah. on Expedia $80 for like $80 air years. stipend. <laughs> no, but it used to be the flat was 500 bucks, And back in the day, you were pocketing 200 yeah, yeah, And yeah. now it's like, I call my agent. I go, hey, look, the fucking coach... Is, is eleven hundred? It's eleven hundred bucks. Yes. They yeah. got to meet me halfway on this. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's ridiculous. Yeah. Paul, will you grab me a tissue? Thank you. Um. So, uh, so then I get plane tickets. Now yeah. they're on Southwest, so I can move them around. It's no right. big deal. But then, uh, then it's like, oh, he's he's spaced out. He wants to know if you want to do a week in a different month, but no air. Like no, no. So for your inconvenience, we're gonna charge you more money. What in the name of yeah? Yes. He wants to know about the money. He wants to know if you want all of it. (laughs) Here you have a little something on the corner here. Oh, that is that thing is like a little cut. Yeah, yeah. It is. Dab it. I can't give it a little dab. Is it bleeding? Yeah, it was bleeding. Oh, it was. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was a cut or like a little application. Oh my gosh, it is bleeding. I thought you were doing a Cindy Crawford thing, (laughs) like like (laughs) kind of a vampire. I had put some makeup on it, so it was okay. Yeah. So now, so I, how long have I been bleeding on this video podcast? Couple minutes. Couple minutes. You're not on camera because it's that's why I didn't do it sooner. Thank you. It's horrifying. Well, next, just go like this if it starts spouting again, and I'll, I'll, I'll delicately tap it so no one's <laughs> wait the whole face. Dana's pointing to my crotch. I'm menstruating too. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> that feels baby. good. Laura you're, Laura, you're having a baby. You're having a baby. Not pregnant. Oh, Let's hang celebrate. On, Robert now here we go. Put him on speaker. Robert. I'm on a, I'm on a, po- can I put you on speaker? I'm going to ask you first. I'm on a podcast with Greg Fitzsimmons and he asked that I call you and ask you a brief question. Okay. Robert. Hey, Bob. Is this Chance Langton related? <laughs> Take a chance. I was <laughs> named, I was named after a wild night in the back of a 57 Chevy. <laughs> Cause that's the way I am. <laughs> and it never entered his mind that he could change. <laughs> um, I just told, uh, I was, uh, this is good camera work. Yeah, by the way, by Dana. The way. Bob, yeah, just, there you just go. to confirm Turn us, the volume a little, just, as, uh, I don't want to keep you. I know you're busy. Um, but, uh, when you, uh, broke your rib, uh, what did you break your rib on? Oh, on you. <laughs> <laughs> it was like we were creating a super villain. <laughs> <laughs> the origin story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of us one of us has little puny ribs and one of us has super strong ribs. I'm not going to say who has the puny ribs. <laughs> so it was like a wishbone and one of you got to make a wish and one did. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, you would think, you know, neither of us are in top physical shape. We should have just bounced. I, uh, <laughs> it really was two pot stickers hitting each other in a stir fry pan. <laughs> Now, did you guys apologize to the line of people waiting to get in as you got into the ambulance? We we like to think that they had a show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and um, I don't remember the accident, but I do know that I because I'm I'm so worried about people seeing my balding pate, even like with head trauma. I'm like, where's my hat? Where's my hat? I don't want. I gotta have my hat on. But it's true, and I, I was telling the the two thoughts I had when I thought I was dying was I'm going to look at the I'm going to die looking at the roof of a car, and Bob, whose hat had been uh, jostled off him, and he had a big cut on his head because he hit his head. And my other thought was, and this is not a joke; it's the truth. Bob looks like the Tor Johnson mask, <laughs> the Don Post <laughs> Halloween Tor Johnson mask, the bald guy with the scar. Who's that? So he was an actor from the 50s that was in Plan 9 from Outer Space. It was a very famous Halloween Let me, let me just put that red velvet rope up again <laughs> yeah. around the table. George Johns, I'm not going to apologize for George Johns. I should Johnson. be in it. I don't even know what you guys are talking I'll sh- about. I'll show you the mask after and, and you'll get it. But I will say this. So that night we had to, the next day we were just stuck in Atlanta. We couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't travel. 
and stuff. And Bob and I watched this Bob Dylan documentary on the Rolling Thunder Review that Martin Scorsese made. It's like a two and a half hour documentary. Bob does not remember seeing oh, it. Oh, wow. Now, yeah. not only do I not remember, I told Dana he should check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Months later, he's like, we watched that together. <laughs> I was like, no idea. No idea. Right. You know, coming to is like, do you know what I mean? Like, I was like having all these, uh, you know, because it was, what, four years ago? And yeah. I'm like, wait, he really is the president. <laughs> <laughs> and then you asked to be put, life. then he <laughs> asked to be put back under again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll <laughs> Can you hit me in the head again? Uh, I woke up on morphine, and I've been sober for decades, and I'm such an addict. The first thought was, I got to get in more car accidents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and, like, this is great. And we were the only, uh, the hospital they took us to, Grady, which is not the uh, uh, high-end hospital, we were the only non-stab victims in the emergency <laughs> yeah. room. They had to call in a specialist. Yeah, really Where's the blade? Car crash. What's that? <laughs> you were stabbed by a car? <laughs> the guy goes, the guy goes uh, his hands all taped up. We go, oh, what happened? He goes, uh, oh, my girlfriend had a knife and I put my hand up. And I go, so she stabbed you? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. Like he was trying to. He was trying to defend her. Like, She's not that bad. Yeah, it was also funny though. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just. He was. He made this joke. He said, well, my girlfriend tried to stab me, and I blocked it with my hand. And Bob goes, "So she stabbed you." <laughs> and we laugh. And he was not used to having short Hobbit-like white people laugh at him. <laughs> and he looked at us for a moment and was trying to process it. And then he laughed. And then became yeah. our protector. <laughs> oh, really? He was your guy? Yeah. Every ER needs one. <laughs> I always say that about prison. Like, if I go into prison, everybody wonders if they could survive in prison. And I always say, well, you know, I'd just be like the class clown guy in there, and I'd make everybody laugh, and, you know, I'd roast the, roast the guards. <laughs> and then the biggest, meanest guy would be like, uh, hey, you, you, you're funny. You made me laugh. <laughs> Come here. Suck my dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, why do I have this gift? Yeah. But he's a really brutal comedian. You, uh, I don't think you should do so much topical material. It's, it's too easy. Yeah, yeah, right. More stuff about family. Yeah. <laughs> Go I inside. Think, I, think you're, I think you're funny, but you ran the light. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of prison so humor. Think, There's no I light. There's I never a light. <laughs> It's a, it's a light overhead that's always on. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, Bob, we won't hold you up. We just want to say hi. Yeah, man. Great to talk to you guys. Hi, yeah. Bob. It's Lori Kilmartin. Hi. How are you? Happy, happy, <laughs> not, happy not Valentine's Day yet. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Someone cares. Yep. All right. Yeah. I've Now I've remembered I've got to get Bob a Valentine's Day gift, too. <laughs> All, right. All right. See you later. You guys are joined. Bye. 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 The best. Yeah. Um, I just did a new special, and he, he gave me a lot of great advice. He came to the venue, scouted it out, looked at the lighting. Told oh, he's great. Yeah, he's great. He's, he's the best. He's great. Yeah. But now, I, uh, again, I, I'm really annoyed at you people. <laughs> hey, who are us? Yeah. For not knowing. Tor Johnson. Right. Oh, he like, held it up while you were. No, I, I gave it to him. It looked like yeah, we saw it. Mike Myers, He actually. looks like he's he's waterlogged. Like he drowned uh, like a month ago. When yeah. did your special come out, Greg? Hopefully March. I'm just this did, year. Yeah, like doing, next month. I don't know. Probably April. I, the plan was March. Now it's gonna. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've never seen that. Yeah. No. No. It looks like Lori for. The, I should just leave. That. That. Did little, you say that, that looked like Lori? <laughs> well, the red. The red blood oh, the coming bleeding. down the face. <laughs> Maybe just be a little more specific immediately after you say it looks like Lori. <laughs> he meant it looked like why, a British why truck. Why did I have to pull that out of you? <laughs> oh, 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 I mean this thing. I didn't mention you look bloated, like you've been floating in a river. <laughs> like, a, like a bald dead zombie? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I didn't realize that. Thank you. <laughs>
Um, all right. Next question is, uh, what is the hackiest bit that you've ever done? Oh. <laughs> I think I feel like I'm working on it now. Yeah. <laughs> Hack is back. <laughs> I think the hackiest joke I've ever done, I just wrote. Really? Yeah. What is it? You know, my wife is, is you know, younger than I am. She's a lot more free-spirited than I am, you know, and I'm kind of set in my ways. And she wanted to know if I wanted a three-way. And at first I thought, like, that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> But then she's like, wouldn't you like to be in bed with two women? And it sounds really fun, but it's not good for your marriage. Because there's that awful moment where you have to look at your wife and say, you know, they're on their way over. You got to get lost. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty sweaty. (laughs) That's a, how is that hacking? That's, that's a great super joke. sweaty. No, no, that's no, that's good. I mean, look, it's a, it's like it's a, got hard, a, well, a, a hard sh- misdirection is now considered hacking <laughs> because it looks like you actually sat down and wrote a joke. <laughs> True. It's got it now. Everything is so just. We're just hanging out. I'm just talking. It's a joke. I'm just <laughs> like you. The big thing with comedy now is we're all on the same level. It's a podcast on stage. Yes. I, I think podcasting is so bad for stand-up. Yeah. In, uh, for a lot of comics, they don't know how to change it, personas. Right. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Right. I've never gone on stage in sweats of any form, Mm-mm. nor have I asked an audience where the weed smokers were at. <laughs> <laughs> Do you do you leave well, the S off the where? Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Yeah. What's right. your hackiest part? Mine would be uh, my son is, uh, my son's father is Mexican or something. My son is Hispanic. My son looks like his dad. In fact, he's born with a neck tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. What's yours? The first time I did Letterman. It was, I, as you guys know, Letterman in the day was the Holy Grail. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah, was, he was the Holy Grail. There yeah. was nothing bigger or better or yeah. me, not just meaningful in terms of like drawing and clubs, but respect among your yeah, peers. Yeah, just you felt right. like this is, I did what I needed so to do. So when you didn't do Letterman, you might hold on to some resentment. Oh, against. Yeah. Against. Certain bookers. Yeah. Yeah. Who book themselves yeah. frequently yeah. on Letterman. Uh, or when you did do the show went through your act with an electron microscope. It's like, Dave doesn't like callbacks involving liquid or moisture. Yeah, yeah. Liquid was a big thing with Letterman. Yeah. You can't really? do anything involving, yeah, liquid, body liquids in particular. That's what right. he meant. Yeah. Oh, is that, did you guys, is that, is that what you're telling no. me? <laughs> <laughs> That's why you didn't get on, that constant bleeding. I was bleeding yeah. from my face all Dave the time. Dave doesn't like any references to Kelvin temperatures or the Dewey Decimal System. Yeah. Or Calvin Trilling. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I go on and I had a really tight set. I'd been doing stand up for eight years and but working nonstop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I had a five minutes that I felt really good about. And so Zoe Friedman was the booker and the producer. And she came out and she was great. Yeah, Zoe's Did, great. Zoe's great. Actually, That's not who we were talking about. I actually, <laughs> that's not who we were talking I about. I actually have a, the, my only resentment against Zoe, who's one of my dearest friends to this day, is that she didn't tell me not to close with this bit. And the bit that I closed with, and I, I'll do it for you. I'm going to do this bit for you it. because you're not going to believe that, that that I had the fuck. Oh, wait, it, what it was, are you getting... I'm nervous when you bring out the whole toilet <laughs> yeah. roll. Oh, you're like, rolling. What? How roll of toilet. By the I way, this is your this is your new thing, Greg. You go on stage with a roll of toilet paper <laughs> and never Why allude to it. Out that could be roll. your hamburger. <laughs> All right. Can you hold this microphone up? Oh, dear. <laughs> Here's my impression of Marlon Brando <laughs> ordering food in a Cajun restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> you did this on Letterman? Oh, no. <laughs> what kind of shrimp you got? <laughs> and then here's the waiter. 
We got barbecue <laughs> shrimp. <laughs> bacon <laughs> shrimp. Oh my god. <laughs> My first Letterman said, oh I fucking God. closed with that. And people Zoe go, Friedman let me. <laughs> did people go insane? Yeah. I mean, the eyes were insane. Did no, the crowd goes berserk. And I was so insecure. I was so afraid I was going to bomb that I was like, fuck it. I'm going to hack it up at the end. <laughs> I'm gonna so do you had, did you use actual toilet paper or tissue paper for that bit? Or did you have like oh, yeah. special rags, like your Brando ra- waiter rag? No, or? I just grabbed a napkin backstage. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And and Incredible. meanwhile, the bit before it was a two and a half minute story about getting pulled over by cops while rollerblading <laughs> through the city. Uh-huh. It was a great, yeah. it was a great original sure, fun, great, peppered yeah. with jokes. And then I <laughs> just tagged that, no transition, just out of nowhere. This a guy's stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's a panic bit. It's the hand grenade you have at a hell gig. <laughs> yep. Oh God. So oh, great. Um, yeah, it was. There was a period of time where they would just go, they would they would smash her act with a hammer and put it back in different shapes. And it was like, if this setup is good with this punchline. Yeah. It's just like, this is nothing. And then I, I did what they said. And I have to tell you, my set, when I did Letterman, was fine. Yeah. It was so fine yeah have you ever had a glass of water that's been sitting out and it's really not any temperature mm-hmm. yeah it isn't cold or right. hot it's just like suddenly the air is thicker at a certain point right that was what it was right 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 yeah it's weird because we're we're the ones working these out in clubs and we don't want to bomb like yeah. so we have this as tight yeah, as it like, can get i, I yes. know, how, and so I know yeah. how this works yes yes there's yeah, a yeah. reason why each of these beats is in there yeah, yeah. And, yes and and it's also you're judging it based on your mind. I'm judging it based on hundreds of people night exactly. after yeah, night exactly. after night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, yeah, so I've really no interest in doing late night at this point because it really, I mean, for some comics, it's a piece of cake. Give Brian Regan a five-minute set. Yeah. You know, give give uh, Jake Johansson a five-minute yeah. set. They, they've got it because that's their act. It's it's perfect. Right. It's clean. It's right. yeah. smart. And uh but now when you're Hacky McGee, um, yeah. next question. <laughs> it doesn't really, it, I mean, the kind of the fun thing is that it doesn't, late night sets don't really do anything anymore. It's because of people just digest it. gives you it. clips for Instagram. That's gives about you, all but it But it's just, it's a clip source. Right, it's, right, right. Yeah, it, they don't Isn't... make or break people, which is kind of nice because there were, there were gatekeepers to who got exposure yeah. and they weren't necessarily honest brokers oh yeah but isn't it strange how quickly that everything's changed and all the things that were like the standards yeah. are not anymore like getting a late night set yeah. you can get more people in a club with a don't tell set um than you sure. can with a colbert set or something yeah it's so jarring to me that everything i the steps that, that i thought i i would need it are have just been washed away it's really and you have to let them wash away. That's the that's the problem. Is yeah. like you really have to embrace. Yeah, I got to put shit online, and mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Uh, God, the, the thing that kills me is like crowd work has become what people use the most, and people are drawing. You know, Matt Reif is yeah. like selling right. out. You know, uh, what did you call them? Yeah, craters, craters, <laughs> and uh, and really based on crowd. And I'm not knocking him. I'm just saying that like it doesn't hold up when you go see them live because. You can't do that for an hour. Yeah. Right. And, and you, you know, it's just like improv when they ask for a playwright and they always shout the same four playwrights. Like it's not actually improv after a while because people keep doing the same things. All right, over give and over us again. a playwright. Shakespeare. Wherefore art thou behind the <laughs> microphone? <laughs> Good stuff, guys. See? Do you know Drew Landry? No. He's yeah. a comic. He's, excuse me really funny yeah uh coming up, and he's a really funny on on threads and he had a oh you're on of, threads yeah is threads a good place to invest i left twitter you did I, when i saw the, i noticed that i was yeah. looking you up the other day and you weren't on twitter because you used to have a great twitter account i did but when i saw the x on the building yeah i was like i don't want to be a part of this guy uh-huh I was, so it's does threads have a lot of people yeah, in it it's, it's just a nicer twitter right you know? do you feel like it's helping your career or it's just a place to dump you know no be yourself? I, no yeah. i think uh, mostly I get most of my traction is from Instagram and right. so much of Twitter was just like, unless it was, you know, ca- starting a political fight, 
he didn't really get a lot of traction. Yeah, or anything. yeah. right. And they want you to start political fights. They funnel people to your feed that will cause you to fight. So you will argue with them, stay on the platform longer and see more pop-up ads for foot powder. I mean, right. It's all just right. a shtick. Yeah. But he had this thing about uh, comedian crowd work. Uh, comedian. Uh, so what do you do for a living? Audience member. I'm a teacher. Comedian. Hmm. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok title. Comedian destroys teacher. <laughs> I love when the comedian gets stumped by what they do. That's my favorite. Especially when it's something really interesting. Like, like, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a zoologist. Now, yeah. uh, that's not my playbook. Yeah, yeah. What? Meanwhile, it's the best, ripest yeah. premise you yeah. can have if you're yeah. actually talented. Yeah. Really? You're a blowjob <laughs> contestant? <laughs> no, I said I was a zoologist. Sounds pretty Are you gay. Sure you didn't say that? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what do you do for a living? I'm a pediatric oncologist. <laughs> what an asshole! <laughs> or just a big eye roll to the other side yeah. of the crowd. Yeah. It's always the other side of the crowd. Yeah. His side of the crowd, they're they're with him. They're in on it. Yeah. And then the, as Drew, as Drew said, then the clip is comedian destroys teacher. Like a, <laughs> Comedian destroys woke insanity. <laughs> yeah, because it's all about the thumbnail now. That's yeah. what I keep hearing. It's all about what you put on that first yep. frame. Yep. Do you have any crowd work in your new special? Yeah. No, not uh, maybe a little in the special, but uh, very little in the special. But you in... do destroy woke insanity. I correct? do. I okay. hate teachers, and I go after them constantly. <laughs> Especially special needs yeah. ones. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Why did... Um, why didn't you No, your special is named my, my pronouns are fuck you that's your special <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, or cis woke grief slay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was thinking of titles for a special that yeah. I'm uh, getting ready to do and that would make me mine is transing day yeah see I don't want to see I want to I don't want to get that many people to watch you know like, <laughs> I'm going to like fuck your woke bullshit but then I'm a huge star yeah 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 that's you know, a lot of pressure yeah you want to just stay in the middle yeah I like to be able to go shopping I like to be out in the stores <laughs> here's another people. thing that we all have in common and I hope this isn't marginalizing you guys in any way but none of us is big stars we've all found the middle and it's a I think it's the best place for comedy because you see people get big mm -hmm. and they got no frame of reference anymore. All of a sudden they're talking about shit that's totally irrelevant. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, we all are very comfortable. Mm. Yeah. We're comfortable. Co cozy. That's oh, cozy. We're cozy. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. And the two non-divorced comedians are very <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> Comfy cozy. No, you're divorced. Right? I'm a single mom, oh, so single I'm mom. rolling at it. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and the the father is a no, but we're not like instructor. living on people's couches, and you know, right. yeah. you know, yeah. and so we're we're able yeah. to come at comedy from a place we, that's... we have a place to get mail. Yes, <laughs> thank yes. you. Right, yes. right, right. Look, I don't want to brag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I booked my own plane ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. yeah. Well. Right. In which I just got a gig in Alaska. Oh. Which I, it was so funny because I've been watching True Detective, the new mm -hmm. season. Have you seen it? Yeah. I've heard it's great. It's set during the all dark days yeah. of yeah. December in it's, Alaska. Yep. And it's fucking freezing. Everybody's poor and yep. people are getting murdered. Yeah. And I say to him, and it, it's the dark. There is not a hint of humor or lightness to it. Yeah. And I said to my wife at the end of one episode, I go, why would anybody go there next morning ding <laughs> offer to go to fairbanks alaska i swear to when, god yes. december or something march or? which oh, is their december dark, right? oh, yeah it's yeah. still i'm mean, still gonna be freezing yeah yeah and of course i'm like and, and i gotta see it i was like i gotta see it and then i go and look for the the, the flights coach is 1450 oh to get god. to fair so i call my agent i go let's make sure we don't get that 500 hundred dollar buyout on the flight i haven't heard back so I don't, maybe it's not <laughs> happening hmm Oh. What's the worst place you ever traveled to to do comedy? Lethbridge, Alberta. Mm. Whoa. Uh, I was I was up in can yeah, I had to take a bus from Vancouver to this bar. I had a broken toe, which wasn't helping my mood. <laughs> That's uh, the thing you think's not going to bother you, and yeah. then yeah. It, oh, it's the only thing yeah. you think about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was in a. I was. Played at a bar, like they just put a microphone at the corner of the bar. It was American Thanksgiving, so I knew that all my 
family and friends were at home. I stayed in a hotel I was, that had some residents in it, you know? The oh, bed, long-termers? Yeah the, yeah, the bed was like sleeping on Eeyore's corpse. <laughs> uh, it was one of those things where I got up super early to take the first bus out of there, so I was on my way out of there. Yeah. Yeah, that was it. Wow. Yeah. And the show was awful. I killed. Oh, you did? No. I, now, I, sometimes you do because when it's that bad, it's all you've got to make you feel good. Yeah. And you, somehow I no, dig I in kill, so much harder on the shows. It was, but it was just like, I think they were just curious to see a yeah. person like, you right. came here? Yeah. What did you I mean, do? I mean, not only are you desperate to do well, but they are so grateful that you mm -hmm. made it to their shit town. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... My stories are like that are all just like triple one nighters, you know? Yeah. But I th I think the furthest I drove was Miles City, Montana, and it's right next to South Dakota mm -hmm. on for a triple run, a Montana run. Wow. And tiny town, but um we were the front page. The com the comedy show was on the front page of the local paper. Wow. Sold out. It was so fun. Wow. Yeah, and they were, yeah. They, were they were happy to see you. Yeah. yeah. Mhm. Mm Do you remember uh Tom Martin? Yeah, of course. No, Tom, is yeah, he where's really he, funny comedian? Was a Simpsons writer too? Um, what from? Where's he from? Where, where as a comic? Where's he from? I don't know. Mm. I don't, think I don't I know. Knew him. But he's very funny. He's a writer now. Yeah, we uh, we were working at Tempe, Arizona, at the Improv in Tempe, Arizona, and we're walking around the mall or whatever, and uh, these people go, "Hey, we were at your show last night. It was great." I'm like, oh, thank you very much. And Tom just goes, "They're they're gonna go in the car and think." We saw the clowns out in the world. <laughs> <laughs> we were at the mall and the clowns were walking around. <laughs> so true. It's like seeing a teacher at the beach in his bathing suit. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you see a deer on, in your yard. You're not supposed to be here. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, mine was Davenport, Iowa. I was doing college shows mm -hmm. and I used to do a lot of college shows and so um and my agent was in Chicago so all the gigs were like you know Indiana Minnesota yeah. everything in the Midwest and it was always in fucking January and February I once mailed him a map and I circled Los Angeles on it and I go this is where I live <laughs> And so, uh, him a map. so great. I would do these like 10 college runs in seven days where there'd be oh. a noontime show and then you drive. Joey Edmonds? No, okay. uh, uh, Ross Ario. Okay. And so, um, I mean, sorry, it's a noontime show. I've, uh, I'm, I'm, I driven that the night before I was, I finished the show in one town and it was four hours away, so I figured, let me do it tonight instead of having to wake up at 8 a.m. for a noon show. Mm -hmm. So uh, I start driving, and I realize I haven't eaten dinner, and I'm fucking starving, and there's nothing. nothing. It's just a straight road that goes off. And then all of a sudden, like a beacon of hope, Taco Bell. <laughs> so I go into Taco Bell, and there's a guy who's the security guy, because this is meth country. And so he's oh. standing guard, and I walk in, and he is enormous. And I've got to go to the bathroom and I've got to eat. And as I walk in, he goes into the bathroom. So I order a taco and I'm waiting for it. And I go to go into the bathroom. I'm knocking, knocking. And he finally comes out. Oh, no. And this guy fucking destroyed the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, you got to think his diet. He's there three, three He's meals a day. Efficient. Yeah. And so he leaves and I, I left the food on the counter. Uh -huh. I was so revulsed. I left it on the counter and I drove. I slept for four hours. I got to the cafeteria. It was a noontime show and there was no stage. They just gave me a wireless microphone that was hooked into the PA system, oh. which also did the announcements for when your pizza was ready. Oh. So I would be in the middle of a punchline and they go, number 19, pepperoni and cheese. <laughs> Oh my god! And there was a and there was a soda machine next to me that was so loud you, just, you could hear me over it. It was like moaning. Oh, you uh, win! And you also two thousand dollars. Yeah. No, oh, no, about eight hundred. Okay. Yeah. Ugh. And yeah. and and the kids were playing. There's a game they play in the Midwest. I can't remember what it's called. It's a card game. Uh, who was the old baseball? Yeah, Bob Euchre. It was called Euchre. This yeah, card game. I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just like, you don't want me here. No. I don't want to be here. You don't no. want me here.
No, they had some extra money in the budget that they forgot to spend, and they were like, "Yeah, eh, let's grab a guy for eight hundred bucks and oh. torture him." Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, that's wow. Oh. Yeah. Once I was performing at a gig in Vermont when I was in uh, going to UMass, and I did some gig in Vermont or something, or you know, out in the sticks, probably Western Mass, and I performed on the the ramp down to the dance floor. There was a like a bar. And then a descending ramp to the dance floor, and, and and a complete inversion of what performance should be. They put the performer <laughs> below everyone. <laughs> everyone was standing above me. Yeah, like I was in the court on Star Trek. Yeah. Like I was in some weird fascist, and I was down below. And as I'm performing, a very drunk man. He looked like Aqualung, <laughs> just zigzagging slowly down the dance floor. <laughs> Until he got to me and then just stood next to me while I did a couple more bits. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Nobody moved to help me. Nobody. And it was very brief. Did a horrible private gig. Me and Ke uh, Kevin Meany, God rest uh, his soul. I just went down a, Kylie posted a Meany clip and I just I went said, down the a We Are the World hole. clip. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just oh, watched yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I've seen him do that bit. Oh, oh my yeah. God. I, I never got tired of it. Never got tired of it. Pun yeah, I saw him in San Francisco a million times do that. Well, Nobody the has ever killed a comedy room the way Kevin Meany nope. did, in my mind. True. I've never seen anybody kill yeah. as hard as him. 100%. Yeah. Remember when this song was out, you might, it was, I don't know who did the song, but it was, the song was, and you woo woo woo, and you woo 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 <laughs> all night. It was some R&B yeah, song yeah, from yeah. the late 80s. Woo 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 all night. It seems woo -woo like all night. the first half of the night yeah. I could woo woo woo. So we do some private gig in a hotel ballroom and it's a giant dance floor and then tables around the dance floor and they put the mic at the corner of the dance floor and it's just like you're standing there and there are tables around you. It's not the best, but not the worst. So I do my set, I finish, I bring up Kevin, I go upstairs, I walk around, and I, I come out in front of the bathroom, and I come out and I look, and Kevin has moved the chair, he's got grabbed a chair, and he's moved the chair as far away from the tables as he could get it. He brought it all the way to the back of the dance floor, and he's hunched over the chair in the dark in the back of the dance floor, 30 yards from the nearest table <laughs> and he's just going and you woo 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 <laughs> oh yeah, yeah yeah that's right <laughs> uh, and then i would just stood there uh, and then the whole way home we just laughed at the insanity of it and like, the crowd by the way never mentioned it like yeah. he got in the car i got in the car we just looked at each other started laughing <laughs> and stopped when we got to boston like the it was just so insane the crowd not into it right not at all oh no not only that that went not into his all. act dana that went into his act sure he used to do it yeah I, as soon as you as soon as you had him do it i, yeah. I had like a flashback him doing you woo, it. Woo, 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 all night and yeah. you and then he'd go and you woo and you woo woo. <laughs> and he used, this is the th all right, here's the thing about Rumi. I was talking about this with uh, about Meany. I was talking about this with, with Bobcat. To be in Boston in the '80s for Kevin to be closeted as he was in Boston in the '80s is one thing. To be running with that group of comedians that he was running with, the group from the barracks. Yeah that were at that time they've all since the 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 ones that are still with us are older and uh, sober and, and mature and, and, have, kids. and grown yeah. yes have yeah. grown yes. with the rest right. of us but at that time these guys that were like 26 27 year old alcoholic coke freaks yeah so virulently homophobic oh no one of them had a joke that went you know what aid stands for Adios, infected dick suckers. Yep, that man's right. name. Yeah, <laughs> I. Kevin Knox. Yeah. I was going to guess a Kevin. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah. And there was another guy. There was another guy who had a joke that was worse. Uh, and people would react like you were at a bund rally, you know. Yeah. And wow. and for I was just imagining what it must have been for Kevin to, and and he, here's how out of it we were, Kevin is going on stage in a sport coat and a bow tie, closing with a Judy Garland song. Yeah, yeah. Closing with I Don't Care. 
and doing a his Judy mother's Garland voice song, the whole time. And it never entered yeah, our mind. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never entered our mind. Oh, and a graduate of a cooking school <laughs> who went on to perform on Broadway. In yeah. Hairspray. In Hairspray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then he was out. Yeah. But when he was close, it never entered oh, our mind God. that he was gay. He's he just w- singing for me. Uh, I don't care for me, me in St. Louis. Yeah, the yeah. big Judy Garland number. Yeah. You told me that. I didn't realize that that, I thought he wrote that out of no, the blue. No, Meet Me in St. Yeah. Louis, yeah. But he was, I grew up in the next town over from Kevin in New York. Wow. And he used to work, my dad belonged to a golf club and mm-hmm. Kevin was a waiter at the golf club. Oh my God. And he used to perform for my dad when he was 18 years old. He would do, he would do, anybody want dessert? There's the New York cheesecake Cheesecake boats are coming. <laughs> Ooh, and he would do a whole act out dance wow. in the dining room. And so my And that f- was in Homo Hughes, New York. That was, was Homo that Hughes. Yeah. Yes, yes, next to Gay Town. <laughs> and so uh my f- so he talked to my dad about wanting to do stand up. And my father was friends with the owner of Catch a Rising Star. <gasps> And my dad got him on stage his first time. No, no idea. So, no idea. So years later, no idea. Years later, my father said, "You remember that comedian Kevin from Knollwood?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course." Because I would be at the pool and I'd be like, "Kevin, can I have a coke, please?" I'm like eight years old, and he's bringing me cokes with his because he had a bow tie on back then. He had a waiter's bow tie, and so so he goes. My father said, "Look out for that guy. He's a comedian now." So I see he's coming to Boston. And I go to Catch a Rising Star in Boston. And at this point, he's done The Tonight Show a few yeah, times. I've seen him. I'm already like, this is the funniest guy. I can't believe that's yeah. Kevin. So I go to Catch a Rising Star in Boston. And Barry Crimmins is standing in the back. And I know Barry. And I'm yeah. standing there with him. And I saw something I'd never seen before or since on stage. Like a, a kill from beginning to end For, like yeah, I've never yeah. seen. And then he comes off stage. The crowd thins out. And then he sees me. He hasn't seen me since I was this big. And he goes, Fitzsimmons. <laughs> Number 236. That was our member number. And he took me Did under his- Did he know you were a comedian then? I had just started and he took me under his wing, used to bring me on the road with him. We ended up becoming, he was in my wedding party. He was one I of my best no, friends. I had no idea that you were that close with Kevin. And I had th- no idea. And then he calls me up and he goes, I met, and I'm just bringing this up because I had no idea. I knew him my whole life. I didn't know he was in the closet. Calls me up and he goes- uh, I'm dating somebody now. It turns out it was my next door neighbor who was my babysitter. So while my while Kevin was serving drinks to my parents, she was babysitting me. Uh-huh. They get married and have a kid. Yep. It's fucking crazy. Wow. wow. I didn't know that. I didn't know any of that. I didn't know any of that. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And she's a comedian. Is no, Marianne is a business consultant. Very successful oh, okay. business consultant who has very bad gaydar. Clearly. Yeah. She does not consult <laughs> no, on the, Gator. The, <laughs> no, the kid. The kid. Oh, she is. Yeah, Kate. Yeah, their kid. Kate is doing some comedy yeah. and she waitresses at the comic strip in New York. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. I know. Crazy. I didn't know. I didn't what know a that. talent that guy was. Yeah. Jeez. Just yeah. Ca- charisma. And it was just like, yeah. it is that thing. Like, and Eddie Murphy has this too. Like, you can't not look at them. Yeah. When they're on stage. Yeah. Right, right. You just right. Like, yeah. And it doesn't always translate over to TV or anything like yeah. that. It's like some people are born live performers and yeah. that's it, you know? Robert Schimmel. Mm, right. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's a guy that did, nobody's, he did it at the highest level you can do stand up, but mm-hmm. it never, it didn't work on TV or films. But you know, I cite him a lot for something. You know, Robert, no one was more aware of the metrics of Robert's success than Robert. Mm. Like, how you doing, Robert? Well, I'm Howard Stern's favorite comedian. Mm. I sold 417 t-shirts <laughs> this weekend. You know, like he knew where he was. I'm 13 now on the national comedian. Right. 113 internationally. But no, it's why he killed himself. Because his bookings were down. Well, he, and didn't he couldn't handle it. Robert Schimmel? Oh. Who are you no, thinking of? Richard I'm think, Jenny? I'm thinking of Richard Jenny. Oh, okay. Wait, that that's why he... Yeah. He got so depressed because of yeah. bookings. But, well, it's oh, well, it's not, but I would put those two guys yes, up there. Similar, Robert. But the point is, I'm going to make the same point. Yeah, Robert was killed in a car accident, and but was dying of cancer was at the time. Ill, yes, but and then the world just went on. Yeah, like it didn't miss a beat, mm-hmm. and you, your success is nothing to live for. Right. You you have to have. A life. 
It's mm-hmm. amazing when you think about legacy because I know a lot of comics that that's their that's their concern. Name me a comedian from 1920. Yeah, so a hundred yeah. years, a hundred years later. Remember, like there was someone named Sandra Sarah Bernhardt, and she was sure. at the time oh, right. the most famous person in the whole world, and right. almost no one knows who she is. Yeah, right. yeah it's and it's weird because a lot of our jokes, even if they're not. Um, considered like uh unintelligent you know 20 years from now they're going to be so rooted in whatever slang we're using right now and right. how we speak that it isn't like you've heard it's not gonna our legacy is like oh you were a comic during that time that's the legacy right, right. it's not gonna yeah. be like oh that's still funny to me you, you all even if like if you listen to lenny brewster stuff you're like i have to put that through the context machine to even semi enjoy yeah. it yeah so it's not nothing comedy is really about the moment that you're on stage Mm -hmm. and whatever people leave with and that's about it yeah right right you really gotta have something i mean the marx brothers hold up i i we had i had this five dvd collection of the marx brothers that i used to show my kids when they were like eight nine years old and they fucking loved they responded instantly interesting and yeah i i I think they hold up probably better than anybody stand up though Oh, in terms of stand up, right? I don't know. No, because it's such a it, it's so in the context of its time. Right. Yeah. Who is the who is the stand up from the longest ago that you think is, is meaningful? Meaningful? Yeah, like has uh, is in the zeitgeist in any way. I, I think there's some things that Lenny Bruce did that are still funny. So that's the fifties and sixties. Yeah, yeah. One, there's one joke in particular that's one or I can cite one or two jokes that are still like you could do it today and get a laugh. Yeah. But it's hard outside of that. No, I mean, is it new heart? Maybe. Yeah. 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 But but his laugh is so timing based, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, the stuff's really funny, but his timing is so perfect. I saw him not long ago and he's still with us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's in his 90s and. Uh, he was he for the longest time had the highest selling spoken word album of all time right and which he won the grammy for having been on stage once or twice once or it's, twice. it's, yeah, yeah, it's a, such an insane story yeah, yeah, yeah. And to learn yeah. how to perform to take it on the road yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. and his album was surpassed in sales by henry rollins from black flag Really? Was, really? Was the was then became the most wow? Uh, no, or someone like that. Someone like that. There's no one like that. But is <laughs> it? It was, it was like, uh, how do you feel about your album sales being surpassed by uh, uh, Henry Rollins from Black Flag? And he just went, "Well, I'm, I'm just glad it was a friend." <laughs> you know, but it was just like such a like effortless, yeah, and just like. I just love that skill of just a couple of words with no inflection and no into. Yeah. I heard something the other day that one of the funniest things I've ever heard. It's somebody's joke. I don't know whose. It's so beautiful. It was just like, I don't know whose it is. He died doing what he loved. Surprising tigers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's Great. just like. Yeah, that's just like, that's a... Well, that's like Don the, Gavin. There was a guy in Boston named Don Gavin. I've, I've heard of him, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, okay. I mean, in terms of funniest comics I've ever seen in my life, yeah. I always cite people go, who are your influences? And it's like, number one, Don Gavin. And wow. there's a there's there's a fleet of Boston comedians that would yeah. say the same thing. Is yeah. he still alive? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. how's he doing? He's doing cruise ships, living in All, Florida now. Yeah, all, all right. those guys are on ships. Yeah. Do you but, know the buddy out of chickpea story? Well, let me tell mine first, then oh, you, you follow know, up with yeah. that. So he he was he drinks a lot of white Russians. <laughs> Even oh, still? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know how there are so many survivors of the yeah. Boston comedy scene. No, he, the way, what I what the the stories are horrific and legendary. And he's been like, like that it's like forever. The entire crew of the Oppenheimer yeah. test are still alive. <laughs> like, how are you guys still alive? <laughs> And so he's on stage one night and he uh, he he was pretty drunk and he gets off and a young comic comes up to him and he goes, uh, Don, um, I hate to bring this up to you, but you did the same joke three times. And Don looks at him and he goes, record six. <laughs> oh 
<laughs> Such a nice, and, and a great guy. Great oh, my guy. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, he used to do this bit about a salad bar. And he goes, yeah, oh, and yeah. he had a thick Boston accent. He's talking mile, 60 miles an hour. He goes, yeah. And he got to say, this thing is kind of, yeah, you get a body, you walk up, and there's like a buddy of chickpeas. And uh, there's this thing, it's, what is this? It's kind of sneeze guy. A sneeze guy. <laughs> and Tom Kenny, and he's like, and in the back, oh, in the way back where you can't reach him with the lobster claws, and they're giving you the finger. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But Tom Kenny was obsessed with, what is he saying there? Oh, buddy had a chickpeas. What's buddy had a chickpeas? What? <laughs> and the, and we, we, I, said, I don't know. I don't know. But he says, "Listen, and like, hey, you go to this. I bet he had a chickpea." And, and we, like, is it a kind of chickpea? Is it a for, better yet a chickpea? Is, and we finally asked him. I think Goldthwait might have asked him. Don, what are you saying there? And he goes, "He's saying about a yard of chickpeas." <laughs> a better yard. But he chickpeas. But he chickpeas. But he chickpeas. <laughs> If I saw Tom Kenny today, and odds are I may. I was just, if I say, but it's chickpeas, yeah. I know exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the front row's easy. Got a yard of chickpeas, <laughs> baby corns. That's a, and in the I back, mean, you the got the lobster, lobster claw. claw. Give me the back. Oh, my God. <laughs> I am now going to call Tom Kenny and tell him I, he reminded me of the rest of that bit. Oh, man. But he was very nice. There was a, there was a, the cop. The I was cop, so cop. envious of the stories from the Boston scene because San Francisco scene did not have stories like that. Well, at in, all. yeah. In 1985, there was a the first annual Boston comedy competition. Mm -hmm. It was a big deal, mm -hmm. and there was like a ten thousand or two thousand dollar prize or something, and and all the giant guys and they just because they wanted the money, it didn't matter, and and I won, and I was 21, and I was. Barely no longer an open micer. And how old they, were you when you started? In 17. Wow. And they hated <laughs> yeah. it. And I will say, knowing my personality at that age, I would also hate <laughs> Yeah. Because I did hate me. Yeah. Um, and Don Gavin was the only guy that was like, hey, how you doing? I didn't like openly despise me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really, right. I, I, I always appreciated that. Wow. Um, I'm going to tell one funny Dana story to you, and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay. I don't want to keep you guys for too long. Is this the cab driver? Yeah. <laughs> so me and Dana, yeah. I was just I was just coming up, and yeah. I, they sent me out to San Francisco to feature, and I'm so excited. I'm opening for Dana Gould. Are you at the punchline? Or at the top? punchline. Sure, okay. yeah. And so they set us up. We got morning radio. It's yeah. a Friday morning. We got to get Alex up. Alex Bennett? Probably. Yeah, or K-Fog maybe okay. or something. Right. So something. it's like 6.45. We, we pile into a taxi. We go do the radio thing. And we start to wake up. A couple cups of coffee. And now we're driving home to the that red <laughs> hotel. Remember that red yes! hotel? Yes. With the really cool breakfast thing yes. in the lobby. Yeah. So we're driving back and we get to the hotel and we've got a driver who is uh from the middle east mm -hmm. yeah and we're joking with him we're having fun we're kind of high on the interview and then we get to the front of the hotel and i go uh <laughs> so you uh you want to come up <laughs> I'm what, what do you mean? I'm uncomfortable again <laughs> even hearing that. Go, oh what God. do you mean come up? I go, you know, and it's like 7.30. I'm like, you know, come up and party a little bit. <laughs> and he's dying. And the guy's like, what? <laughs> no, 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 you get out of my cab. Yeah. And by the way, we're four blocks from the tenderloin. I mean, it's not, you know, it's like, oh it's highly plausible. He gets that and offer. We've just met. Like we met <laughs> yeah. about the night before. And, uh, and then at the end of the weekend, he gives me a gift, and it's in it's. Oh, you forget, we, you, the, when he we got out of the car, he prayed. He he because oh. <laughs> it was time, and he had to. We had to I, get out his premise. I want to go on the cab driver's podcast and hear the yeah. story from his point of view. <laughs> he got out. He got out his uh, prayer mat. And, uh, wow, what, that's what right. Am I, I forgot looking, about What am I that. thinking? I'm blanking. About, he had to bow towards Mecca. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, end of the weekend comes and he gives me 
a it's a, it's in a laminated uh, bag and it's a graphic novel that he bought me and it's called Hollywood Homo. <laughs> and I still have it on my shelf to this day. And it was a like a dime store. It was probably written by Ed Wood. You should check. It's probably worth uh, like $40,000. Uh, you know, it was like a, a 25 cent dirty adult store paperback. Yeah. Like a salacious gay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Paperback. yeah. Oh my um, God. All right. So let me give you guys some plugs before we go. Uh, I know that Dana Gould is going to be coming to Acme Comedy Club. That's right. April 25th to the 27th. Mm-hmm. Top, top two clubs in the country, I would say. Yeah. Um, so look for him there. If you're I'm, in LA, I'll be re- filming my special at Dynasty Typewriter on March 18th. Ooh, oh, wow. really? Yeah, that's, that's a great place to film. Yeah, top two clubs in the country. Uh, Lori Kilmartin is going to have it. She's got a special now called? that you can get. Uh, that is called Cis Woke Grief Slut. Mm-hmm. You can get it on Apple. You can get it on Google, Amazon, Amazon, YouTube. Yeah, you- mm-hmm. on YouTube. Yeah, if you go to my website, LoriKilmartin.com, there's links to all the different streamers you can get it at. Or Comedy Dynamics, it's yeah. on their website, mm-hmm. and she's also got live shows. She'll be in Salt, uh, Glendale, Stir Crazy, uh, this, this weekend, weekend. Uh, and then Salt Lake City, Utah, Wise Guys, March 8th through the 10th with Goldman. With the- oh, yeah, hey. right. yeah, another Boston yeah, person. Yeah. Uh, D.C., March 14th. Centerville, PA, March 15th at 3.30 p.m. Is that a typo no, on your website? No, you know what? That would be, yeah, I need, it's a late, it's not an okay. afternoon show. It's the way the Squarespace makes you enter event oh. times. Okay. Oh. Uh, Chicago, March 20th. Ann Arbor, the 21st. Dayton, May 10th. Portland, June 5th and 6th. And then Burlington, Vermont. Go to, what's the name of your website? Uh, LoriKilmartin.com. Nice, original. Thank you. I actually have killmartin.com as well. Oh, yeah. My pro my PR lady's like, no, you gotta say your full name. I'm like, it's extra word. It's an extra word and more letters, but you can do killmartin, K-I-L Martin. You know what my website is? Fitzdog. Yep. Got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, you guys, thank you so much <laughs> for uh getting here and rolling with the uh the adjustment, which I, I I honestly feel like I should be doing a podcast with two guests. This was no, that's, fun. Yeah. yeah, we did an hour. This is going to be a two-parter. Yeah. But I, I fucking, I mean, it's you You guys are both really special to me, so I'm yeah. glad that we did this together. And yeah. we, had a call, we had a drop in. We Bob drop guy came in. in like Bob Hope, walked by, poked yeah. his head in. <laughs> Brooke Shields. Hey, I thought this show had been canceled. <laughs> Back to Toluca Lake. Yeah. Dana slept like a log last night. He was in the fireplace. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And thanks to Paul Roman and Bobby for supporting us here in the studio. And we'll see you guys next time.